live commentary of that one to come from four o'clock. It was due to get up and running at 1.30 uh, for a part two sides in desperate need, you feel, of a morale-boosting victory. Motherwell against the Bernian. It's live here in Sports Town of BBC Radio Scotland with John Collins, Stephen Cragen and Paul Mitchell. Thank you, Richard. Good afternoon, everybody. Two captains are two goalkeepers, Liam Kelly and David Marshall, just shaking hands with our referee, David Munro. The boarding is being taken off the field of play. Motherwell have gathered across to our left-hand side. The traditional team photo. Five at the front, crouching. Six at the back, standing. And they will peel off to the right-hand side because Hibs have moved into the half that's opposite us here. Hibs all in black this afternoon. The change kit is very strong and very smart. Motherwell traditional claret and amber colours. And David Marshall, final couple of words to his side before Jim Newell stands over the ball. Last week in the second half against Hearts, Hibs 58% possession, nine shots, three of which were on target, 44 final touches in the final third, which was double what their opponents managed. So they played well, couldn't find the back of the net. Motherwell outshot Livingston 16-11. to Their pass accuracy, however, was not what Stevie Hamill was looking for. And they have to be a little bit crisper here this afternoon. Sunshine and shade bathe the field. It's been too much shade for these two teams. Poorest in terms of the last eight in the Scottish Premiership. They've picked up six points apiece. What is going to give this afternoon? We are underway. Newell plays the ball back to Porteous, who knocks it out of play on the far side. And Mullerwell coming from right to left will get the throw. Going in towards Cornelius from again down the side it goes. Uh, going up for the header is Ryan Porteous, who definitely looks motivated. Porteous drops the ball down, played back inside Stevenson round the corner. Again, is calling for it, doesn't get it from Cadden. Won't just take the nick and go out of play to throw into Hibbs on the far side. Motherwell from the shields dropping back. Hibbs through Joe Newell will take the throw. Thrown in short to Josh Campbell. Now played forward. Goss with a header away. Newell again with a header. Flicked across by Campbell. Stretching across was Johnston. And will be picked up well by Callum Slattery. So the first thing I've noticed from last week's game is Johans went from left to right. McGarry's went from right to left. So a little change there. Don't know what the reason for that is because I thought Card and McGarry would be a good combination on this right hand side. I was just wondering, Matt Penny likes to go high, he likes to be an, ag an aggressive fullback. So if he leaves space, it may give the opportunity for Johan to utilise this pace. Yep. That's exactly probably why he's done it. Balls run through towards the edge of the Hibs area. Porteous goes down under the challenge of Kim Van Ven. And if Douglas Ross was unpopular in Motherwell already, he's even more unpopular now on the far side for flagging for that one. Kim Van Veen was in very, very quickly upon Ryan Porteous. Hibs are David Marshall in goal. It's Cadden, Bushiri, Porteous and Stevenson. Campbell McGann and Newell. And it's Johan Nisbet and McGeady. And David Marshall taking his time. Everybody's tilted across to the left-hand side. And the ball played down that side. Headed down by McGinn, Porteous. He came off the side of his boot, but it does break for Jan on this right-hand side. He can't get past Penny. And the ball drops into to Cadden. Cadden plays it back on to Bushiri. Bushiri over the halfway line, picked up by McGuinness. Back into Cadden. Cadden getting away from Spittle. Out wide onto Johan. Johan tries to play it back onto Cadden inside the area. Curls the ball across. No hits takers. McGinney comes in late. Ball hit against him with the clearance. Cornelius gets it away as far as Joe Newell. Closed down well by Callum Slattery. Slattery moves the ball away. Picked up by Stevenson. Hibbs now gather coming down that left-hand side. McGinney in there. Really good play from Cardin. Johan Lincoln up on the right-hand side. Cardin getting in a great position. He put a ball into a good area, but the problem was he never really looked up and there was no Hibbs players in the box. Yeah, nobody arriving quite at the pace of Cadden on that occasion as the throw in comes in picked up by McGuinness McGuinness gets help in the midfield from Nisbet McGuinness emerges across the centre circle back to the halfway line onto Cadden Johan plays it first time towards McGuinness McGuinness tries to get away from Goss sliding across as Matt Penny ball into the area but the free kick is there just reached the player Stephen before the, before the ball yeah 
just a little bit clumsy more than anything, but certainly that looks like the, the duel who could pose the problems, Chris Cadden and, uh, and Johan, because Bless Brittle wants to do the work, he wants to track back, but he can't keep up with the minute Chris moves the ball on, he just runs without the ball. Johan will be frightening Matt Penny, he'll be scared to get tidy, he'll be scared of his face in behind, so I think there's a little bit of doubt in the Motherwell players' minds. So Stuart Newell will get ready to retrieve the ball, standing alongside him. David Munro, the referee, Adam McGeady is there as well. McGeady places the ball. It's usually the player that places it will take it. But they both still stand there. A one-man wall, if such a thing is possible, is Conor Shields. He's the closest. And everybody loaded to the left-hand side of the penalty area. Nil-nil, four minutes gone. Neil runs over the ball. Adam McGeady swings it in. That looks like it's too deep. It's going to break past. Bushiri and go behind, normally delivers such a great ball. Yeah, he's going to be bitterly disappointed and his manager will be so frustrated. Great position, a player of his quality, he cannot be putting that out the back. So disappointing, especially when you've got seven players up ready to attack it. I thought it was actually better shape for a left footer, Joe Newell. And I was at the, the St. Mary Hearts game yesterday in a very similar position, but it was an open play. And Robert Snodgrass put a ball in like that, he aimed for the back post, everybody missed it and in the back of the net. You know, it gives players a chance to run along the line of the ball, whereas the outswing is always swinging away from goal. Ball played away by Liam Kelly over the halfway line. McKinn gets it, plays it out wide. Van Veen can't keep it in, knocks the ball out of play. It's going to be a throw to him, to which they take about 20 yards from behind where it should have been, but as it goes behind, play can't continue. Rocky Bushiri has it, runs outside of his penalty area, still going, plays it out wide, on to Chris Cadden. Cadden sends it down the line, looking for Johan. Ricky Lamy is in there, though he's going to try and let that run out of play, realised they didn't have the strength to do so, and it's to turn and play it out. I, mean, I don't know why he doesn't look inside his goalkeeper's a fabulous striker of the ball, it's just a simple pass back to the goalkeeper. Look what he's done, he's given a needless throw in away. Bad things can happen from that as Cadden comes in, cuts it back, Lamy deflects it. Any back in by McGinnis, Nesbitt missed it, almost fell for Ada McGeady, but it is away by Paul McGinn. Connor Shields tries to win the header, almost gets it inside to Van Veen, but good slide by Newell, Newell plays it to Porteous now over the halfway line, come hips again through Rocky Bushiri, starting now 9 in the last 10 does attract a fair bit of criticism but he's becoming more and more solid as the ball comes inside, on to Ryan Porteous takes it out wide, on to Lewis Stevenson, Stevenson on the halfway line closed down, turns, lays the ball back once more, nil nil. 6 minutes gone Kevin Nisbet's dropping into the midfield to try and get involved, turns, spins, gets it away from Connor Shields Here's Aidan McGinney on the left-hand side, just inside his opponent's half. Now he's starting to accelerate. He's going to try and find Eli Johan on this far side, and he's done so. Johan picks up, driving towards the edge of the box, steps inside his man, going to let fly. Let's just say it wasn't very good, and he didn't get the connection he was looking for. It's gone out past the penalty well, here for a throw. The golf course, you call that a slice. <laughs> Complete <laughs> miss hit. Well, John... John and I were talking before the game about Johan and saying, you know, he has moments in games or moments every couple of games where something opens up for him and he produces a little bit of magic, but he's too inconsistent. At, and I think that's just back that point up, John. A prime example in a good position and does nothing with it. Yeah, set himself up well on the right-hand side to come in as well as Motherwell. Now trying to find the first meaningful attack. It's headed on by Spittle back towards the halfway line. Goss will gather him again as to stretch to stab it down that right-hand side for Connor Shields. Back inside to McGinn, halfway line. Goss, ever present in the league this season. Back on to McGinn. Muller of Liam Kelly and go the back four. McGinn, Johansson, Lamy, Penny, and Cornelius Goss, Slattery, Shields, Van Veen, and Spittle. Now it's been picked up by Matt Penny. Into the box it goes, away by Bushini. Picked up by Carl McGuinness. McGuinness lays the ball back. Here's the opportunity to get moving. Chris Cadden closed down very well indeed by Blair Spittle throwing to Hibbs. I think barring the you know that little passage of play from Motherwell, they've looked a little bit jittery. I think they know their home form's not good. They're clearly at the bottom of the table, or, or at the bottom end of the table. Hibs have settled a little bit better, they've moved the ball better. I think the you know the rotations and the link up play from Hibs has been much more uh, improved than what has been in recent weeks. Well, taking the ball for a little wander there, has to move it all the way back. Chris Cadden then steps forward again, throws it inside his opponent's half. Ricky Lamy heads the ball back. It's not gone out of play yet, it has now. And Cadden gets the throw, gets it into Newell, being chased down by Slattery, but he's going to lift the ball, Joe Newell, out wide to that far side where the dangerous Ada McGeady is waiting for it. McGeady up against Cornelius, steps inside Shields, 35 yards from goal. 
Low centre, Gravity drops the shoulder, plays the ball out wide. Stevenson is there, Stevenson throws the ball back onto Joe Newell. Back once more, out wide, that left-hand side, nowhere to go, so Hibs are forced back to the halfway line. Porteous onto Bushiri, opens up, Chris Cadden. Cadden starting at right back this afternoon. Started in the midfield last week against Hearts, plays it forward onto McGuinness, McGuinness somehow keeps it in. Ellie Johan just outside the box, pulls it back onto Joe Newell. McGeady was calling for it, Newell does a little circle, spins round, plays it back out wide onto Johan, the Frenchman. Tackled initially, it's good play by Spittle, but it comes to Cadden, back to Johan, Johan into the area, tracking back. Well, come Motherwell, they have to be, and it's played away down the line. Clumsy by Bushiri, comes right through Kevin Van Veen. That gives Motherwell the out they were looking for, silly free kick. And that's exactly what the striker wanted. He wanted the foul, did it well. Bushiri's got to be clever than that. You want your centre-halves to be tight, but you don't want giving weak free kicks away, giving the opponents opportunity to calm things down, because Hibs, Hibs are controlling this game from kick-off. They're knocking it about nicely, looking more threatening, but they're still not creating anything. Motherwell just a bit too passive for me. Almost standing, watching Hibbs knocking the ball about, running unopposed, knocking the ball about unopposed. And you look at that midfield trail, Goss and Slattery and Cornelius, there's not really a tackler amongst them, so someone's going to have to lay a marker down. Cornelius picks up, plays on the far side on to make it back on to Sean Goss. Goss, back out wide. Out by the touchline by McGinn, McGinn plays it inside, now it should be clipped out to his far side, Mike Penny's inside the area, cuts it back inside and Joe Newell has to get rid of it, great interchange of play, Slattery got the ball out wide to Penny, but Hibbs got the clearance. Yeah, it came from, nice little bit of build-up play from Motherwell, came to Slattery, he's played the nice penetrating pass out here on the wide, on the left-hand side, a really nice weighted pass. Oh, well, um, Sean Goss a little bit slow to go to the corner because he had Blair Spittle was on. Hibs didn't have a second player out there, but it is going to be a corner. First of the match, ten minutes gone. Sean Goss gets ready to take it. So we watch our left-hand side. Goss raises his right arm, strikes the ball with his left foot, misses everybody, comes outside the penalty area on the right-hand side. Cornelius slammed into reverse, plays the ball down the side, looking for corner shield. Aidan McGiddy with a tackle. McGiddy, the ball doesn't go out of play, has to turn, spin, play it down the line and knocked it out of play. Tackle by McGiddy is not something you see very often. Yeah, his manager will be very happy. He's, he's done his defensive duties, he's won the ball. Well, never mind a tackle, it was a body check as well, Paul. <laughs> but sometimes that's what happens when you get older, you put a bit of weight on and, you, you know, your strength but, uh, it gets a bit better. Use it well. Still waiting for the breakthrough. Mullywell and Hibbs in the 137th league meeting at Fir Park. Ball played inside, that's going to be lifted by Goss from right to left. Matt Penny midway inside, his opponent's half, slides it down to the edge of the area. Well won. Now it comes back to Penny, it was Cornelius who played the ball, Penny sends it into the box, takes a deflection, David Marshall keeps it in, Marshall all in pink, runs to the edge of his area, has a little look to see what his options are, wants to drop the ball, and then decides he's going to kick it on the fly, send it out wide onto that far side. Oh, I've got to give the goalkeeper credit for that, what a magnificent ball there, out to the winger, perfection. Lou Stevenson, thumbs up to the goalkeeper. Now the ball goes long, over the top, looking for Kevin Nisbet. Nisbet trying to keep it in by the corner flag. Nisbet arrives there, gets the head of Sondra Johansson. Johansson knocks the ball out of play. It's thrown in quickly onto Aidan McGeady. McGeady up against Cornelius. He steps inside, clips the ball in the box. There's a little head flick on there. And Carl McGinnis straight through onto Liam Kelly. Before I can get the thoughts of Stephen Gregg and Motherwell go on the attack. Here comes Blair Spittle. Spittle, love it all, interchange with Slattery. Slattery. Right open up for Cornelius, just overplayed it slightly. Stevenson in the area has to get the ball away, doesn't waste it, plays it up well onto Josh Campbell. Campbell up towards the halfway line, the header won by Goss. Now it'll come down onto Slattery, holds off Cal McGuinness and will play the ball into the centre circle onto Ricky Lamy. Lamy out wide, Matt Penny ever present since joining, flirts with the very edge of the line but kept the ball in. Pulls the ball back onto Slattery, his control let him down, allowed the ball to come onto McGuinness, and McGuinness tries to get past him, takes a little nick off the Motherwell player. Stephen Craig and signs of life for Motherwell. I was going to say, Paul, they've now arrived in the game. You know, they're taking part. Sean Goss is pivotal to how Motherwell play. He dictates the tempo, he dictates the style of play. You know, do they go forward? Do they take the pressure off the ball? Almost the same as what Joe Newell does for him. So the more Sean Goss is in possession, the more Motherwell will be in this game. But you're right, now they're showing a bit more urgency. Hibs won one in the last seven, that 4-0 against Livingston. 
Motherwell with a win in six as the ball goes out of play on that far side, run out of play by Hebs, and it'll be the throw, will come the way of Motherwell. Nil-nil here, still to come this afternoon, Dundee United against Rangers live from Tannadice as the coverage of the Scottish Premiership continues. Throw in on that far side, no hurry, Paul McGinn, former Hibs man, scoring his last Hibs appearance, that win against St Johnson. Noticeable for James Scott, former Motherwell man, scoring a hat-trick in the game as well. All out of play again, no way forward. Hibs pressing nicely there, John, just trying to make it difficult. Yeah, they've got a good shape, that's 15 minutes gone, and what I'm seeing is Aid McGeady is a standout player technically on the pitch, and Hibs have to do everything they can to try and feed him in the final third, because he will be the one that creates... Cornel Cornelius plays a long ball onto Kevin Van Veen, then lays it off. Chance came for Blair Spittle, it looked like Van Veen would have held the ball in, tried to get the shot, spotted the run of Spittle, just couldn't take it quite in stride, pushes it wide. Yeah, it's the first chance that Motherwell have really had to get in behind the, the Hibs back line. Van Veen does really well. He pays off the back of Bashiri. Dean Cornelius lifts the ball over to him, but he can't get his first touchdown. He can't get himself set. He tries to go back inside his right foot. Good defending by Porteous, but you're right. You know, Motherwell have always lacked, certainly this season, as a midfield player to get beyond Van Veen, to get close to him. Blair Spittle did it, but unfortunately his left foot shot dragged wide. Blair Spittle, three goals this term. And that's coming against St Johnston. Long ball played forward over the halfway line. McGinn hooks it over his shoulder. New little back header. I thought uh, Van Veen got caught there by Bushiri. He remains down. Here comes Cadden on the halfway line. Motherwell, not best pleased. The big striker gets himself back to his feet. And Bushiri plays the ball inside onto Joe Newell. Newell hooks it out wide to that left hand side. McGinney controls on the thigh immediately. Turns, faces up for him again. Little step over, clips back inside, he's at the very apex of the area, sends it and Kevin Nisbet should score! The architect was Aidan McGeady, the finisher was Kevin Nisbet, and he drills the ball past Liam Kelly. Motherwell nil, hips one. Magnificent play from McGeady, three players running about him, he's got such tight, close ball control, he manipulates the ball, lifts his head, and what the good players do, they execute the perfect ball. It's not just whipped into an air, he's looked up, he's seen Nisbet, he's picked him out. Nisbet does what he does best, hits the target, bang. Hibbs deserved it. Do you know what? Dreadful defenders. You know, how can you allow a centre forward to take a touch in the ball seven yards from your goal with his right foot and finish with his left foot without anyone putting the challenge in? It's great play by McGeady, of course it is. What was also, I think it was Kyle McGuinness, was up beside. Uh, Kevin this so that attracts defenders it creates a little bit of space however if you want to you know get yourself out of trouble and you want to defend well you want to keep clean sheets you've got to defend your box well enough Motherwell haven't done it it's been a recurring theme you listen to Stephen Hamill over the past seven or eight weeks we give up soft goals we don't stop crosses we don't defend crosses once again it's come back to bite them and if you one thing Aidan McGeady doesn't have at this moment he doesn't have his pace he, he used to have the pace but he's got this skill so they've got to get tighter to him they know he, as soon as the ball arrives, a defender's got to arrive and try and knock him and the ball at the same time. As soon as he gets it, and you're a yard away from him, he starts jinking left and right. And he he's just looking for a yard, John. That's all he's looking. You know, he, you know, years ago, he just knocked it and ran yeah. after it. Now he's thinking, can I manipulate it a yard to my left or my right? Because he can deliver with both feet and Motherwell being punished. There's a flare inside the penalty area of Motherwell. It's giving off green smoke and they're just taking their time. There was a VAR check just to see if there was a foul involved in the build-up. That has not come to fruition from a Motherwell perspective. So the goal will stand. And Aidan McGeady, the supplier, Kevin Nisbet, as Stephen Craig had just said, all sorts of time, but he still had to finish it. He's up against a decent goalkeeper. He is a finisher. Uh, said that from day one, he is a quality finisher. He stays calm in that key moment. He doesn't slash at things, he hits a target. Three goals and five appearances since his return. Missed the first 20 games this season. As the ball booted into the crowd by Kim Nisbet on that occasion. Throw in will come for Motherwell, who trail at home. It's not a new scenario for them. As the ball comes across onto Ricky Lamy. Statistically the worst home team. Third best away team. It's just slightly bizarre. Here comes Blair Spittle. Turns, tries to get the cross in. Doesn't take a deflection. That's a goal kick. Well, it's not about reaction for Motherwell. You know, you're down there, you're in trouble. This is where, as a manager, you look around the pitch and you look at your players, the body language, the mentality, the intensity, the communication, who's taking the lead, who wants to push and pull people all over the place. If no one's going to do it, then you're, unfortunately you're in a sinking ship. 
David Marshall gets ready to take it. I'm looking at that midfield, and I'm looking at Slattery, Goss and Cornelius. There's not really a voice in there. Paul, there's not a voice all over the pitch. They're all quiet. Even Ricky Lamb, he's probably very experienced, doesn't say a word. Van Veen's experience doesn't say a word. There's no one communicating their driving teams. But I look at a lot of footballers nowadays, not many people do that anymore. Yeah, that's a fair point. Cadden plays the ball back onto Porteous. Porteous drives it forward. And Ricky Lamy will use his goalkeeper. And the goalkeeper wearing that captain's arm man, Liam Kelly. 91 consecutive Motherwell appearances for him. And the ball comes back onto Ricky Lamy. Back onto the goalkeeper. Kelly lifts it. That could be way too long for Matt Penny as to take a step back. Again, I've, I've, I've gave. Ian McGarry, all the credit for technical ability, but his press there, the balls went back to goalkeeper, it's a 100% sprint, forced the keeper to play a rush pass, out for a throw in. Good play from McGarry again. Ebb leading by 1-0, they have the throw, moving from left to right, the ball breaks to the halfway line, John Newell has to go down his haunches to play the ball back onto David Marshall. Marshall takes a touch outside his area, hooks the ball onto that left-hand side. Lewis Stevenson is waiting there, Stevenson. Pulls the ball back on to Ryan Porteous. Porteous will gather inside his own half, not under pressure. Plays it to Rocky Bushiri. Bushiri now trying to get away from Kim Van Veen. Almost ran into trouble. Sean Goss, but the ball gets knocked back onto Porteous. Porteous short to Bushiri again. Now to the halfway line. McGeady takes a touch. Upended is the kindest word. Sean Goss realised he was away. Mother of, mother of got to push up, got to put Hibbs back four under more pressure. They're sitting off them, making it easy for Hibbs. I think there's a bit of fear, John, in them. You know, I'd say they'd started the opening ten minutes a bit jittery. They kind of found your foot, trying to find your feet, and now Hibbs have scored. They're getting into their shell a little bit. They're dropping off. Nobody wants to go and press. Nobody wants to run. That has to change. Four points. The difference between these two sides. We've got to seven. If nothing changes in this match, still a long way to go. 20 minutes gone. Motherwell nil. Hibbs one. Hibbs will want to throw it down by the corner flag. It's just the one part of the ground we cannot see. The players behind a pillar. And eventually, Hibbs will emerge with the ball and to throw it in. It's Cannon. Cannon to Johan. Back onto Cannon. Cannon trying to go down the side. A little touch out of play comes from Blair Spittle. And it's going to be another throw. Ball has just wandered down the side. Hibbs looking to retrieve. Joe Newell does so and gets ready to throw the ball in. Taking his time. Chris Cadden with the throw across the area. Nisbet flicks it into the box. Goss gets in ahead of McGinnis. Hooks the ball over his shoulder outside the area. Newell brought the ball down. Could have played it first time but wanted to bring it down. Played it out wide onto Lewis Stevenson. Stevenson felt he was fouled. Tracking back is Josh Campbell and he'll play it back to David Marshall. Marshall takes a little touch, sends it outside the area, back onto Porteous, gathered by Hibbs once more, battling. He's in the middle of a battle, is Lewis Stevenson, but enjoying it all the same. Played out wide onto Chris Cadden. Cadden trying to get away from Slattery. Plays it out wide onto Ellie Yuhan. Yuhan at the edge of the area. Yuhan plays it in. That's blocked. There's a shout for handball as it comes off Matt Penny. It's going to be a corner kick. VR will check. They check everything. Now, corner. No, from my point of view, 100% is set his hand, but no chance yeah. is a penalty for me. No chance in a million years you can yeah. give well, a penalty for that. I was going to say, it's a 100% handball. But the ball comes off his own foot and rebounds up onto his hand, so there's absolutely no way it's a penalty kick. However, let's ah. just... Don't hold your breath, Paul. Don't hold your breath. Come on. S it, it, seven Hibs players around the referee. As if to say... But the players must know everything gets checked. May as well chill. And the referee is waiting, and he basically says corner check yeah, over. Quite thank, right, too. Thank goodness. Yeah, nothing in it. There's been a few controversial ones of late, but that certainly wasn't amongst them. Hibbs first corner of the game, Miller will have hired one. And it's going to be taken by Hibbs, Joe Newell, left foot, chance to get the in-swinger. And the ball will come across. Joe Newell taking his time, appearance 1-2-6. Newell floats the ball in, just comes past Porteous, breaks to Campbell at the edge of the six-yard box, blocked well, and away by Johansson. And he goes in again. Well, Hibbs almost found a little gap there. Bushiri wants the ball thrown in quickly. It's not going to come. And the referee says, hold on, because Joe Newell's going to come across and get ready. I think Porteous had a really good chance to score there. He was up early. He didn't make full contact with the ball. I think if he had, he was only five or six yards out. It could have been 2-0. Yeah, well, we'll need to pick up Ryan Porteous. Three goals this turn. Now, here comes Joe Newell. We saw this 
last week at Tyne Castle, the long throw into the area to try and cause problems. One of our taller side than Hearts as the ball comes in, three players go for it. Connor Shields gets the header knocked away by Blair Spittle, bringing it down as Chris Caron does well to feed Joe Newell out wide, right hand side, steps inside, good block coming in by Paul McGinn. It's going to be another throw. Hibbs really putting the pressure on John. Yeah, they're controlling the game and the opposition's half. I think they've got to look to get, try and get second goal. That's it. When you're on top, you've got to get goals. Stevenson plays the ball into Newell. Newell into the middle. Liam Kelly comes, drops the ball down. Stephen, you said you were at uh, Paisley yesterday. It's classic. Well, St Mirren should have been out of sight against Hearts. Absolutely. And it, it's probably a mirror, image, uh, a mirror image of this game, Paul, where they were dominant. They looked good. They had chances. Didn't put them away. And when that's the case, you keep the opposition alive. They then grow as the game goes on. So you're right. Hibs will be desperate to get the second goal for their own belief and their own morale. Ball out wide on that far side. Hibs, six consecutive away defeats. The last victory, 1st of October, 2-0 at Ross County. Little, little ball gets played through into the area. Marshall almost let it go past him. The run came in from Blair Spittle. Not sure if Marshall got caught in the sun or something like that. It seemed to take a while to come down, but he got down onto the ball and made the stop. It was a terrific pass. I thought he should have got that. Yeah, it was one of these ones you're looking to see who's going to get there first and... Of course, any goalkeeper, you're just a little bit hesitant with the player coming into the area. There's Hugh Hand, who's come up to this left-hand side, plays it forward onto Josh Campbell, Sandra Johansson in for the slide to knock it out of play, throw into Hibbs. Well, Hugh Hand's not going to wait for Joe Newell, I don't think. Joe Newell's too far up by the halfway line, doesn't want to make the run. Ball comes into Campbell, back onto Yuan, up against McGinn, trying to go for the byline. McGinn does the tackle, but Yuan gets it back. Second time deflected into the area. Goss tried to get it away. Eli Yuan gets back in there. Hibs from McGinnis. Edge of the area is McGinney. McGinney just to that left hand side. Tried the low shot. Didn't really get what he wanted on it. Drives it wide. Motherwell fans not happy at the defending. Hibs fans encouraged. And they're looking shaky, Motherwell. They're nervous, they're anxious. Hibs are not opposite. They're looking nice and confident. Everybody's wanting the ball. It's amazing what a goal does. Manager's made a little switch. That's Johan away to the left. McGarry's over here on the right now. I think Lee Johnson will be delighted with the response. You know, all week has been spoken about the pressure, the poor run. You know, that it was rumours last week he lost his job. You know, so all that can sometimes put people off and put individual offs and players can go into their shell. Not today. The Hibs players have puffed their chest out, put their shoulders back. They're really enjoying this game. Liam Kelly at the edge of his own area. Lays the ball short. Sandra Hansen sends it long. It's going to be too long. And it's going to be headed away by Cadden. It's going to be picked up, though, by Slattery. Slattery challenged by Joe Newell. Free kick awarded just down below us. Referee David Munro just saying to Sean Goss, yep, give him the free kick, don't worry about it. And slowly back to his feet is Callum Slattery. Free kick will come, Sean Goss just cleaning the studs, taking out some of the dirt that's in there just so he can get a better connection with the ground as he delivers. He stands over the ball, comes back to him now. And more destruction coming from the Motherwell technical area for Liam Kelly. And we're watching the other end of the field as Goss left-footed from the left-hand side, plays it in, headed away by Porteous, Newell then tries to get on the end of it, knocked back in by Lamy, goes over the head of Slattery, comes outside the box, left-hand side, Blair Spittle, Spittle plays it back into Goss, Goss into Mill, Van Veen brings the ball down, but he's got him, three men round him, pulls the ball back, great block, Sonny Hansen got the shot away, there's Slattery, oh, what a save from David Marshall, 20 yards out, right foot, he tried to curl it low in the corner, came through a whole heap of bodies, David Marshall down late, turns the ball away for a corner. Super strike, good save from Marshall it's gone in the bottom corner but before that good play from Van Veen he's took it really well in the box and he's pushing it, laid it for his partner to get the strike on target good play from Motherwell Motherwell with the corner Spittle, hit in Ricky Lamy, has scored against Hibs before gets the head of it, goes wide just kept in by Van Veen outside the area that's a great ball back across the header is up off the crossbar from Ricky Lamy Great play from Motherwell. Vault still not away. Taken down by Spittle. Out wide onto Cornelius. Back onto Spittle. Here's a chance for Goss to get the ball in the area. Could have overrun it. He did so at the second attempt. The ball hooked high in the air. That's going to be a goal kick. Another chance for Motherwell. Yeah, I think Ricky Lamy probably should score with the first header when the cross comes in initially, the corner kick comes in initially. But Kevin Van Veen once again does incredibly well on this left hand side. Keep the ball in to dig out across. Lamy off the crossbar. 
at last, Mother will come into life, showing a little bit of creativity in the final third, but you know, Hibbs riding her luck. David Marshall will get ready to play it forward. This season at Easter Road, Hibs won Motherwell nil. 8th October, Connor Shields sent off by Grant Irvin. 56 minutes around Porteous with what proved to be the winning goal. Some 11 minutes later, ball out of play on that far side. Good crowd inside Fir Park on a beautiful January day. And the ball out of play is going to be taken by Paul McGinn, although Chris Cadden's sitting down at the moment. He's going to require some treatment. So he sat down, didn't see anybody doing anything to him, Stephen, but he's just down and obviously wanting something. He's a tough boy, so it must be a sore one. He doesn't go down easily, does Chris Cadden. It'll certainly be a blow. You know, he's been influential, certainly, down this right-hand side with Yuhan, with Aidan McGeady. Just his running power coming from deep poses team's problems. So I know in his younger days he had problems with his hamstrings. I mean, I don't know if there's a hamstring issue just now, but the fact he's just sat down in the middle of the pitch would tell you his time's probably up. Played 139 times for Motherwell, dozen goals. Local lad from Bells Hill, and he's just having a little check with the Hibs backroom team. Yeah. See if he can stretch it out, but yeah. Hibs might be getting someone ready. Brian McLaughlin is our man pitch side. Afternoon, Brian. Yeah, he was struggling, I think. It is his hamstring, I'm afraid. It looks like he was he was struggling with it for a couple of minutes, and he is coming off. The player coming on will be Ewan Henderson, and that, no doubt, will mean a... With some sort of rejigging around the tactical areas for Hibernian after just half an hour. Thanks, Brian. Little things can change games, John Collins. This can change this one. Well, it's a strange, strange substitute to bring on. He's a forward player coming on for a right back. Is well, it, well, well, number 10, Henderson, attacking midfielder, isn't it? Is it Josh Campbell possibly going to come and play right back? Yep. I think that's what it looks yeah. like, isn't it? Yeah. So well, He's got good legs. Yeah. He's very similar, actually, in his energy levels. And well, that's what I was going to say. Because Chris had success on the right-hand side with running power, there's no point in putting the defender or a natural, an out-and-out -out defender, put someone who wants to go that way. I've seen a fair bit of Josh Campbell. I don't recall him being in the back line. But number 32 now in at right full-back. Ian Henderson is off the bench. Not been involved in the last couple of games, but he's back now. And the 40th appearance. 20th of the season, 10 from the bench. It's a position he's used to. He's trying to get involved as the ball comes back. Apologies, we would appear to have lost the line there at Fur Park. It has been a very, very strong start for Hibernian. The lead... Thanks to that goal from Kevin Nisbet, scored in the 16th minute. Some uh, excellent play. Had a chance to have a look at the goal online. Some excellent play by Aidan McGeady, who finds himself just a little bit of space. But my goodness, the defending, as the guys highlighted in the commentary, the defending by Motherwell. Kevin Nisbet was left in splendid isolation. It was uh, Matt Penny, I think, at the back post. Was just a little bit late to react, but uh, Nisbet certainly did react. And... Knocked it in to give Hibernian what sounds like it has been a very, very deserved lead to this stage. As you can hear in the background, the line is back up from Fur Park. So let's rejoin our commentary team of Stephen Craig and John Collins and Paul Mitchell. As Motherwell come forward, thanks Richard. Ball slid out wide onto Spittle. Spittle into the middle. Van Veen was shaping to get the header away. It was Porteous who got the header in to get it outside the area. Motherwell looking much better in the last few minutes. Little twist and turn here. Callum Satter lays the ball back to the halfway line. Motherwell nil, Hibbs one. Kevin Nisbet for the goal. That's a long ball played wide by Ricky Lamy. Out of play on the far side, rather taking the sting. John Collins out of things there. Yeah, it was a strange ball. He looked for the big diagonal. Well, there was nobody out there. So disappointing because Motherwell have got a little bit of momentum. They've picked up a little bit. I would say the last 15 minutes, they have definitely improved from the first 15. Yeah, they've been looking an awful lot better. So the throw will come on that far side with Stevenson sometime today. Would be lovely. Still taking his time, getting a fair amount of abuse as well. Throws it up onto Kevin Nisbet. Nisbet trying to play it across onto Ewan Henderson. Sliding in there was Dean Cornelius. Henderson gets the touch around the corner, comes Stevenson. And Sandra Johansson just played the ball out before it could come off the foot of McGeady. McGeady takes the throw down onto Nisbet, but Lammy's up ahead of him. Nisbet then runs into his back. Bowls him over, fairly clear free kick. And Hibs just have to settle themselves down with a couple of positional changes that they've made. And personnel, obviously, with Henderson coming on. But Josh Campbell, I'm really interested to see how he does it right back. Well, they should do fine in possession of the ball. Lots of options. 
the test will be when somebody's run out to get a winger or a 2v1 in the back post, which, which he's not used to. Well, I think that will be the key to it because, you know, we've already said that Johan doesn't really want to defend, so Matt Penny goes beyond him. If Matt Penny and Blair Spittle can get a 2v1 against them, it may pose him a few issues. Long ball forward from Kelly. Van Veen felt like he was pushed over. No, says the referee. Kel McGuinness, there was almost putting a headlock there by Callum Slattery. No free kick either. The referee just letting things get on with it. Ball forward by Bushiri. Bushiri over the head of Sonny Johansson. Lammy has to go back, gets the low back hitter. And it will run all the way through to Liam Kelly from our angle here in the main stand. Wondered for a second if there was enough on the ball for there proof to be. It was just slightly overhit. Uh, Johan, at least he's, he's showed a good attitude, trying chasing a bad ball, making it a good ball, but easy one for the goalkeeper. Oh. Ball from Kelly, not kept in on that far side. And it is going to be a throw on the halfway line for Lewis Stevenson to take. He's leading by one goal to nil. He's looking to four success away from home. The next three will be at home including the Scottish Cup tie against Hearts. The throw has given the ball away up to Callum Slattery. Slattery away from McGeady, wide on that right-hand side, clips the ball forward, Porteous pins himself back and really chases after it and then just allows the ball to run out of play. There was no way around for Connor Shields on that occasion. Good defending from Porteous, uses his body strength, just guide it out. Hibbs lost possession here, Nisbet's got to do better from the throw and he's got to make that stick. He's given it away and... It gives opposition momentum, they pick it up in the midfield, driving towards Hibbs back four. Hibbs have got to try and get control of the game again the last 10, 15 minutes, haven't been able to keep possession, partly because they're a little bit anxious, because Mother will press them higher, with a little bit more intensity. Stevenson plays the ball forward, up towards Ewan Henderson, Henderson loses out, though he's a bit timid, picked up by Cornelius, back it comes, on to McGinn, McGinn plays it out wide, Opportunity to get the ball into the box, it's deflected, it goes behind, it's going to be a corner kick to Motherwell, their third of the half, and an opportunity again for players to come forward. Hibs would be well advised to keep a little eye on Ricky Lammy this time, Stephen Craig, and he caused all the problems last time. Well, I hope they don't, <laughs> and he manages to get himself a free header, but Paul, in theory you're right, he's the most aggressive header of the ball. Yubushiri is the man alongside him at the moment, They're dancing together as the corner again will come in from Spittle into the middle, Porteous, big header outside the area, knocked on by Campbell, Campbell played over the head of Spittle, thumps the ball high in there, it's going to drop down for Matt Penny, good control, killed it quickly, now on to Cornelius, Cornelius back out wide, opportunity to get the ball back and restart, and McGinn will play it back onto Liam Kelly, just outside his area, nine minutes and a half time. Hibbs leading up for part by one to nil, but long angle ball into the area and Porteous sliding on his knees, heads the ball back to David Marshall to cut out the danger. Again, good anticipation from Porteous. He had an idea, good defenders have an idea where it's going to land and position themselves accordingly, and that's what he did. Got back, nice composed header back to the goalkeeper. On the flip side, I would say that's twice Connor Shields. I mean, I've said it about Connor Shields, I think he's always a player, listen, he's got good pace, he's always a player who's running after the ball as opposed to running onto it because he doesn't anticipate what's going to happen. He waits till the ball goes and then chases it. It was Portis the first time and Portis the second time, so Portis is a clever defender and he's not a clever centre-forward. <laughs> ball played forward by Hibbs, brought down by Newell, halfway line. Pushed from sunshine to shade, Stevenson. Now it's Ewan Henderson, Henderson up against McGinn, fancies that race and he's done so. He's got past him, Cornelius slides in. That's exactly what you want from Dean Cornelius, your full-back beaten midfielder, slots in to make the tackle. And McGinn, he's still got a little five-yard burst. Surprise me there, aren't you, Stevie? Yeah, he can cover those five yards pretty impressively. He's on the ball again, the difference maker, the supplier of the goal. And a good finish by Kevin Nisbet. McGeady on the ball again. Left hand side. Played back inside. On to Joe Newell. Newell trying to get away from Cornelius. Ball centre circle. Rocky Bushiri takes the touch. Plays it out wide. Too weight for it. Campbell and Jan. Jan plays it towards the area. Slattery just with through his arm in time. And it's gathered and played down the left hand side. Little clip ball forward. Good play again by Bushiri to get ahead of Kevin Van Veen. Hips keep it in. McGinnis plays it forward. Taken down by Lamy, Lamy under pressure, gets the ball out wide. On to Matt Penny, Penny plays it into the centre circle. Cornelius turns, hooks the ball to get Paul McGinn to come over the halfway line. McGinn, shields outside him, still going from the halfway 
edge of the penalty area. Now it comes into the middle. Spittle almost got the header on from Shields with a cross. Couldn't connect. The ball drifts out wide on this near side. I mean, it's a superb delivery into the box. He's got to be head on the ball and hit the target. Missed it completely. Here comes Goss. Goss with the outside of the left field. That's a brilliant ball into Shields. The header at the goalkeeper. It had to be brought back there. Cornelius was running in, but it's an easy save for David Marshall. It's a golden opportunity. You know, I was critical of Connor Shields earlier about his pace and his anticipation, but there, he just has to guide the ball back into the middle of the penalty box. Kevin Van Veen is free. Because of his poor head, it goes right into the arms of David Marshall, and Stevie Hamill had his hands in his head. It was a real opportunity to get back level in this game. Mother will push it and probe him, but I'm not too sure they overly convinced me they're going to get back in the game. Back to the Blair Spittle header. He just didn't want to head the ball. It's as simple as that. Ball sent long by David Marshall. Over the halfway line it goes. That comes off the head of Matt Penny, who still claims for the throw anyway. Josh Campbell takes it into Cal McGuinness. McGuinness, who missed out last week against Hearts, not the starting 11, which proved not to be a particularly good choice in the end. Ball gets played back onto David Marshall. Marshall up to the halfway line. Just a little dink forward by Lammy into Goss. Goss plays into Shields. Shields across with Van Veen standing still. And Hibbs easily clear. You now Henderson coming through the middle. Sandra Johansson sends it across. There was no touch by Josh. Sorry, Paul, Campbell. that's lazy. Lazy from Blair Spittle. The ball's, the ball's gone up the pitch to, to Sandra Johansson. He's trying to play uh, Blair Spittle in, but he's offside. Penny comes forward. Motherwell did get the throw. There was a deflection. But Penny couldn't make the advances. Now the 1 2 Ellie Johan with McGuinness, but too heavy. The Frenchman's second touch, and Motherwell gather again. Paul McGinn, centre circle. Motherwell searching for an equaliser. Push the ball through onto Dean Cornelius. Back onto McGinn. McGinn forward onto Kim Van Veen. Van Veen almost being held and pushed away at the same time by Rocky Bouchiri. And it comes out wide again. Motherwell through McGinn. McGinn turns, spins, plays the ball back again. Connor Shields. Now McGinn trying to get the better of Joe Newell. Joe Newell wins the ball. And they'll send it down the side. Henderson. Was he being held by Sean Goss? He was. And of course, Motherwell not getting one free kick. Hibbs getting that one, and Motherwell fans not happy. It was terrific play from Joe Newell down there on the left back here. He wins possession, but it doesn't just win possession, kick up the park, win possession, lifted his head, kept his composure, played it to young Henderson, who held it up and drew the foul. The Hibbs have lost control the last five, ten minutes, so they're looking forward to that half time whistle. Yeah, they're the team that look like they want the break. Hibs unbeaten the last five visits to Fir Park. They won three, drawn two. Both the draws were goalless draws, but they have the lead here, leading by one to nil. Long by Porteous. That might fall for this bit. Lamy has to come in behind Sundry Johansson and get the ball away. Does so, get to the halfway line. Bashiri holding on. Van Veen, the referee, again happy there's not a problem. And uh, the ball eventually heads its way back. On to Liam Kelly. Kelly has it, the edge of his area, all in white with the yellow boots. Lays it off to Ricky Lamy. Lamy forward on to Sean Goss. Hibbs with the press at the moment, but Motherwell trying to get past it. And again, thought Spittle could have gone forward on and pulled the ball back. On to Callum Slattery in behind him. Halfway line, left-hand side. Turns, plays a short ball on to Goss. Goss really fancy that. Played it back on to Slattery. Slattery on to Ricky Lamy. Lamy tries to find space on that far side. Paul McGinn just inside his opponent's half. Short incursion there. Plays the ball down the side looking for corner shields. And Lewis Stevenson knocks it out of play. I'm not sure if he was calling for a free kick. Didn't look much in it. And now the throw-in comes on to Blair Spittle. Spittle opens the body up, plays it to Slattery. Centre circle, Ricky Lamy. He's got the chance to come forward. Matt Penny is out wide on this left-hand side. Penny's there, trying to play in first time. He's blocked by Yuan. Back onto Penny. Penny cuts the ball back. Spittle at the edge of the area. Turns it in. Chance for the shot by McGinn. There's a shout. It's a big shout for handball. And it's cleared up towards the halfway line. And Motherwell head the ball out of play. I've got a pillar right in front of me. I couldn't tell if there was contact. Stephen well, and John. Well, from, from here it looked like Porteous tried to clear it missed time he's clear and it kicked the ball on his own hand it did hit his hand but I don't think you can give penalties for that either you played off your body onto yourself is fine as uh, Stephen Hamill just inquiring of Craig Napier our fourth official if there's anything coming from that that isn't Ah, there's going to be a throw from Josh I Campbell. I think more desperation from Motherwell, isn't it? You yeah. know, they're just hoping something can fall their way, they can get a little bit of luck and just try and change the momentum of this fixture. Uh, they just want a little decision somewhere along the way. As the ball comes back, but certainly 
not a penalty kick as the ball gets headed forward. A little high feet there by Henderson. And Motherwell will get the chance to play it forward. Two minutes to half time. And it was just with the goal, but they do want that break just to resettle themselves. What will please Lee Johnson at the moment, John Collins, the fact their goal's intact because they have leaked goals. They've lost two or more in five of the last seven games. Yeah. I wouldn't say they've been solid. I think they've been a lot of balls in the last 20 minutes into their box. They've got to stop the balls coming into the box. Another one down the side. Bushiri has to come. Slide, knock it out of play. Penny gets the throw in. Spittle to Slattery. Goss back onto Slattery, being pursued there by Eden McGeady. Now Lamy opens up, tries that cross field ball. Well, so often Shields and McGinn are out there, they weren't, they were infield. Yeah, but he's looking for the... That's a difficult one, the, the volley across to the other side. He had three players in front of him. He had better choices and easier choices in front of him. He chose a difficult one and gave the ball away. Now it's Rocky Bushiri is down, saying to the referee, I'm fine. And then just indicating to the referee what the problem is. I think he offered his hand to get helped up. The physio came halfway on. Well, you can't be halfway on or halfway off, so the player's going to have to go off and get some treatment. He didn't want the physio, I think he was just sorting a couple of things out. But he is off the field of play. Hibbs temporarily down to 10. And coming all the way down the line is Craig Napier to check when he can come back on. Plays at the other side of the field, so it should be virtually automatic, and he is on the field of play. Much ado about nothing. As the ball is sent high in the air, centre circle knocked up by Yuan. Back into the Hibs, half by Lamy. Bushiri with a header forward, rather aimless. Goss gets the header in, Porteous thumps it. This has not been the finest passage of play we'll witness today. As Blair Spittle heads it on, Rocky Bushiri. There's another slice, that goes out of play. And just like Jan Slice, it wasn't pretty, and Motherwell had the chance to come forward. I think Bashiri's got that little panic attack in him. Every now and again, he slashes it. So, three additional minutes. They start now here at Fur Park, BBC Radio Scotland Sports Zone. Sunday afternoon, I'm Paul Mitchell, John Collins, Stephen Craig, and alongside me, pitch side is Brian McLaughlin. As the ball comes back, and Ricky Lamy plays the ball through. On to Liam Kelly, 1-0 to Hibs, the visitors lead. The goal coming after 16 minutes, Kevin Nisbet is third, just in five games back. Aidan McGeady on the ball, he was the supplier, inside his own half. Plays it to Joe Newell, sends it long, looking for Ewan Henderson. Left-hand side, Sondra Johansson is there, just stabs the ball out of play, wrapped his foot around, knocked it out, and it's going to be a throw-in to Hibs. The ball was just kicked away there by Corner Shield, simply delays things a little bit more. And Hibs in absolutely no hurry. No, no. Um, They've got to try and get a hold of the ball, just calm things down, retain possession. Hibs have been forced into one change, Ewan Henderson for Chris Cadden. Now the ball on to Ewan Henderson, who was offside, didn't, back, didn't look along the line, was well offside. And that is going to be given, and Motherwell will push everybody forward. Liam Kelly says, on you go. And he takes the ball inside his box. The dark gloves, the contrast to the white jersey. And plays the ball over the halfway line. Blair Spittle waiting for it. Goes up, does win the header. Comes inside. Two Hibs players go after it. McGinnis gets it down to Eli Johan. Johan going the wrong way. Plays the ball onto Porteous. Porteous immediately under pressure. Plays it across onto Bushiri just outside the box. Pulls the ball back away from Kim Van Ven. And plays it back inside his area. On to David Marshall. Marshall. Little dummy run. Kim Van Ven turned his back. So Marshall gets a little bit more time. Strikes it over the halfway line. Ricky Lamy won the header, Josh Campbell pulled the body back and really got much into that, breaks down onto Nisbet, Nisbet plays in for Johan, Matt Penny turns it away, didn't get the connection he wanted, ball is outside the area, Ellie Johan plays it in, away by Cornelius, outside the area, Spittle gets the better of his man, he was Josh Campbell, and then Joe Newell gets the free kick, just caught there by Callum Slattery, and the free kick Again. should end the half. Again, Johan, he gets into such good position, but his end product, he hits the first man so often. I have to say, it's been a really controlled away performance from Hibbs, hasn't it? You know, yes, you're going to give up a few opportunities, and you're going to have to rely on your goalkeeper to make a save, but I think they've been in you know, control of this game for large spells. Ball played back inside. It was a question of which Hibbs would it be, the one from the first half at Tynecastle, the one from the second, certainly 
continue in the second half performance. Here's Ryan Porteous moving his way forward. Now position, he's lost the ball. Slattery tries to play it through. Here's a little chance for Blair Spittle. Josh Campbell goes in, somehow wins the ball. He missed it first time. Spittle couldn't control and he got back up and on with it. Eli Yuhan back inside. Here's Cam again, it's halfway line. Short to Yuhan. Yuhan clips it back to him. Hips just turn and play it back, but in no hurry. Referee will give it a little look and decide that is it. It is half time at Fur Park. Motherwell struggles at home, continue behind after 60 minutes. The architect, Aidan McGeady, lovely touch and turn, fooled the defenders at the edge of the area into the box. It went given this bit of time to take a touch in between the two centre halves and ping the ball behind the goalkeeper to make it at half time. Motherwell nil, Hibs one. Every goal. What a goal! Every game. That is right out of the top drawer. Every kick of the ball. Well, it's a terrific finish. This is Sports Sound. It's absolutely tremendous. From BBC Radio Scotland. New drama on BBC iPlayer. How long have you been friends? Forever. Where youthful euphoria becomes a distant memory. It's cancer. I've got four months. Adapted from Andrew O'Hagan's acclaimed novel. He has to do everything he can to stay with me. I love you with all my heart. But I might want to do it my way. The story of a lifelong friendship born in a small Scottish town. I want to end it myself. You can't I just check out. We've had great times. Mayflies. Watch now on BBC iPlayer. You're listening to Sports Time with me, Richard Gordon. We've got live commentary to come from here at Tannadice. Dundee United against Rangers gets underway at four o'clock. So about an hour and 40 minutes until the action will begin to unfold as Dundee United look to... Try to climb up the table towards safety. Rangers, of course, simply looking to rein Celtic back in at the top. We will build up to that. We'll bring you the interviews, the team news, and the whole match live at the conclusion of the encounter in Lanarkshire for Park, where Hibernian, after six successive away defeats, look to be pretty much in control. Although just that one goal, single goal advantage given them by Kevin Nisbet in the 16th minute. Uh, I think John Collins, as you highlighted, uh, great skill by Aidan McGeady, but my goodness, a helping hand from the Motherwell defence. Yeah, poor defending, and uh, I'll give all the credit to Aidan McGeady. He is the one, for me, the one player on the pitch that, that can make things happen. Every time the ball comes to his feet, he's got that creativity and his head's up, which is the key when the ball leaves his foot. So no surprise that he was the creator. Perfect delivery into the box. And Kevin Nisbet does what Kevin Nisbet does. He hits the target, stays calm, pops it in the back of the head. Only what Hibbs deserved. He started the game really well on the front foot, uh, controlling the game. Last stage of the game, Mother will have came back into it and uh, have put a number of box into Hibbs, balls into Hibbs' box and caused them problems. But Hibbs, I think this, I think they will need a, a second goal to win this game, though. But the manager will be happy. Stephen, it was uh, look at. John described it as perfect and it was in the sense that it landed right at Kevin Nisbet's feet and he certainly showed his predatory instincts in terms of uh, how he finished it but it was just a little dink ball into the box it wasn't like it was the one that was fired then and gave the defenders no chance at all they, they should have reacted to it shouldn't they? Richard they should have but you know if you'd watched Motherwell for most of the season you know the goals they've conceded uh, have been very soft they've been preventable I mean even the goal last week uh, sorry Monday against Livingston it was just a simple ball into the box from a set play uh, a Motherwell player's out jumped uh, and, and the ball's in the back of the net by uh, is it Morgan Boys at, at, yeah. li at Livingston so you know sometimes as a manager you have to put a little bit of responsibility on your players to go and pick people up and you know try and stay tight as a back four I mean clearly the, the back four was disjointed when that ball came into the box and they must know when Aidan McGeady's in possession of the ball he's going to try and find a little bit of space you know it, it was quite congested he's just looking for a yard to put the ball into an area now he's put the ball into an area where Kevin Nisbet is in acres of space and you know, if you want to get away from the bottom and you want to be a competitive team you can't be continually giving opposition strikers and good opposition strikers that kind of space in your box so it came as no surprise to me because I think all season long there's been a softness about Motherwell and how they've defended and, and goals they've given up the pattern of the game has been similar to you know, what I've watched very often that they're decent to watch when they're with the ball out, of the, out with possession you know they're easy to play against at times but they're 
you know, they try and attack teams, they lack a cut and edge, they don't have a creativity in the final third. I'd imagine Connor Shields would come off at half time, Stuart McKinstry would come on because Stuart McKinstry is the only player at the club who you can imagine that can dribble past a player, dribble past a couple of players with a little change of pace, Aidan McGeady esque, and try and make something happen because at the minute, Motherwell, they're, you know, they're, they're plodding the way, they're working hard, the fans are agitated, but, you know, if it sticks like this, and heads are going to go on and win the game comfortably. Talked a lot about the confidence of the respective sides, Stephen, beforehand. Did um, have been take an awful lot in that respect from the Nisbet goal? Yeah, well, it was always going to be whoever got the first goal in the game. You know, their confidence and their body language was going to change. And when Hibs got the first goal, you think for the next 10, 12, 15 minutes, you think, you know, they could take this game away from Motherwell. Likewise, if Motherwell had got it, they probably would have felt the same. But I think that would be Lee Johnson's only frustration, that they're only a single goal up. You know, I said it just before half-time, a good away, strong performance. But Stevie Hamill and Brian Kerr have got a bit of work to do at half-time. They've got to convince the players they can go out and, and, and make something happen. They've got to convince them to get themselves into the box. They've got to show a little bit more appetite uh, and imagination in the final third. Or they have to do something. They have to stimulate the players by making a couple of substitutions or, I keep saying about it, changing the shape, uh, the shape, trying to change the dynamic of the game. Because if you just keep doing the same thing over and over again, you're going to get the same results. And that's exactly what Motherwell are getting. Were there any signs, John, towards the end of half that Motherwell were starting to get back into yeah, no, a little? I think the last maybe 20 minutes, Motherwell definitely improved. They got further up the pitch. They got into the wider areas. They got good deliveries into the box. They hit the bar. And they should have done better and a couple of the crosses what the Hibs goalkeeper more so there was definitely progress as the game went on from Motherwell's point of view from Hibs' point of view if I'm Lee Johnson in that, in that dress from just now I'm telling my team we've got to feed, feed Aidan McGeady in the final third if Hibs feed him he will create chances for Nesbitt there's no doubt about it every time he gets the ball he he's stands out above everybody on this football pitch with his technical ability but technical players need fed you don't want him running all over the pitch you want him fed in that final third because he's such good close control and he, and he draws three players towards him Mother aren't just doubling up on him there's three players so when you've got three and two players round about it means there's space elsewhere in the middle of the pitch for midfield players making penetrating runs at the box or for Nisbet so he's such an important player and Hibs need to keep their fingers crossed in the manager that he can stay fit because if he stays fit he'll, he can transform this team because he gives confidence to his teammates all round about him he takes the ball in tight situations I don't think he's giving the ball away every single time he gets the ball played to him he kills it stone dead and he's head up and he releases it at the right moment so you've been a glimpse this afternoon as to what the Bernie have missed. I mean, they've been very unlucky in that respect, haven't they? They've barely had McGeady for the whole season. And, of course, uh, Martin Boyle also out for uh, a lengthy period of time. It would have made a huge difference to Lee Johnson to have those players available throughout, wouldn't it? Without, without a doubt. I mean, that Boyle on one side with his, with his pace and, and, and energy and, and running it for what's... And McGeady with his trickery and intelligence and the other wing moving about. I mean, and, and then if you've got a fit Nesbitt in the middle, then you're talking creativity. Pace one side, trickery on the other side and a finisher in the middle. That managers, obviously, you, you want all your players to be on the pitch, but the reality is they're not. And fans and media have got to realise these things and maybe cut the managers a little bit of slack instead of jumping all over them. Come on, John, don't be getting ahead of yourself. <laughs> Come on now. I know what you pundits are I like. Mean, I mean, that's a bit ambitious, but I just think that, you know, basically the players we're talking about for heads are game changers. You know, players who can impact the game individually, which are, yes, they're part of the team, but they can create something themselves out of nothing. Whereas I look at Motherwell and I think you don't have a player like that at this minute on the pitch. You know, they're plodding the way, they're playing in front of Hibs. They're not really cutting them open. Yes, they're crossing from deep and, oh, OK, you know, their best chances probably came from set plays. You know, and, and obviously at halftime, the whistle went, the booze came around for a part. So Lee Johnson will be saying to his players, if we go out the second half, we can get an early goal, the game's done. Yeah. Because the fans will turn, the Motherwell players maybe go into their shell a little bit, won't want the ball. You know, they aren't really hurting us from open play. So if they can get the second goal as quick as possible, they could really kill it off. Got some scores for you from the FA Cup. Of course, a very, very busy weekend down south. A um, couple of full times, Bristol City won, Swansea City won. That goes to a replay. Derby have beaten Barnsley by three goals to nil at Pride Park. I see among the goal scorers, Jay Collins' penalty. That takes me back, it has to be said. <laughs> Um, Cardiff City 1 0 up against Leeds United. It's Hartlepool United 0. Stoke City 1. The former Wraith and Firmland and Kamarnik central defender Ewan Murray with an own goal in that one. And moving up towards the half hour mark, Norwich City 0. Blackburn Rovers 0. 
Stockport County nil, Walsall nil. Later, there's Aston Villa, Stevenage and Manchester City against Chelsea. Later here on Sports Sound, full live commentary from what will by then be the one remaining fixture from the weekend, Dundee United against Rangers. That gets underway at four o'clock. Stephen Thompson, Craig Levine and Al Lamont will be bringing you all the action right here on Sports Sounds on BBC Radio Scotland. Um, so, a big, big, well, 10, 12, 13 minutes, however long the managers have with the players in there before they send them back out. Um, Stephen, I think probably everyone else of a motherwell persuasion in that stand down below you will be hoping for the same as you're hoping for, and that is some something that is going to spark this game and turn it decisively in the way of the home side. Yeah, well, somebody has to take responsibility. You know, there's no point in, uh, as players looking around at your teammates and hoping he's going to do it or he's going to do it or, you know, they might create something. Take responsibility yourself. If it means picking up the ball and driving at someone, you know, trying to put a good delivery into the box, just taking the lead and, and then your teammates will follow you. So um, I would love to say I'm, I'm hopeful, but I just think they lack something. You know, cutting edge is the word. And I'm sure if you spoke to Stevie Hamill now, and he analysed the first half to us, to Brian. Of course he can't, but he'd probably say the same things he's been saying for the last seven or eight weeks, or even longer, because obviously with the World Cup break, that we're doing OK with the ball, we've had a couple of nearly moments, we've considered a soft goal, we have to learn from it. That is the same things that have been said time after time. So I think when you get to that stage, and I keep going on about it, you think, well, right, let's mix it up. I might as well go for it, because what we've done in the last 15 games, or 15 and a half games, hasn't brought us the results we want. But likewise, players can't hide behind the manager and, and hope something happens. There has to be someone who puts her head above the parapet and says, I'm going to be the one. If Ibernian can see this through, they move up into seventh spot. They'll be within touching distance of the top six. But as Stephen pointed out earlier, John, if this continues, and Motherwell can't find a way back into it, they're well and truly embroiled in this relegation battle, aren't they? Yep, they will be. They'll be under, under pressure. And from Motherwell's point of view, after I was the manager, I was saying that they have to press Hibs higher up the pitch don't let the centre defender, I think Bashiri can get a little bit shaky when he's put under pressure, and don't let them get quality passes out to McGarry so that's from a Motherwell's point of view but Hibs, Hibs have got to go for the second goal, second goal gets the fans right on the Motherwell players' backs and all of a sudden you get one or two Motherwell players hide, no what in the ball that's a perfect scenario for Hibs but Mother will get a goal and it changes the dynamics in the stands as well. All of a sudden the booze go to cheers and the energy levels completely turn. So the next goal is key. Brian McLaughlin down pitch side. Um, there are going to be or at least one change, I gather. Yeah, that's my understanding, Richard. Uh, Connor Shields certainly not endearing the Mother Roll fans in the opening 45 minutes. He's going to be replaced. And the man coming on, a young man who I'm sure uh, who's going to be a future star here. I know he's on loan here at the moment, but he's, he's well highly thought of here as Stuart McKinstry. Brian, thank you. Stephen Craig, and it's almost as if you know what you're talking about. Well, you're right, Richard. Sometimes you guess, and sometimes, sometimes you get it right. Sometimes you get it right. You can just sense watching the game. You know, the fans were getting irritated when Connor Shields was in possession of the ball. You know, he, he hasn't scored a goal this season. I think he might have scored one or two last season. He arrived from Queen of the South. Yeah haven't been a regular goal scorer in the lower divisions. He just, unfortunately, hasn't replicated that form. He's maybe playing slightly out of position. I think he's more of a centre-forward than a wide right. So it's probably a square peg in a round hole. So it's difficult, but you can just sense, you know, the negativity around him, unfortunately, coming from the stands. And about 10 minutes before half-time, Stevie Hamill sent Stuart McKinnis out to warm up. Because that's what they need. They need someone who can just something out of nothing. Defensively, he might lead you short at sometimes, but you've got to take that gamble. You're the home team. David Marshall's had one save to make. If you're the home team and that's all you can muster in the first half, then as a manager, you have to try and mix it up and, and try and bring a little bit of energy and enthusiasm and appetite into the game and hopefully Stuart can turn it around. Now he's a young player, as you say. He's on loan from Leeds United, isn't he? I'm sure he scored against Celtic earlier in the campaign, certainly got a couple of goals. Um, so he will be hoping to make an impact uh, from a Hibernian point of view. It's... I guess more of the same, um, but they have to try to ensure some kind of defensive solidity, John, unless they are to add to the goal tally in the second half. Hibs have, I think Hibs have got to go and attack. They were at their best when they're playing no positions half. I think the, the, the back four's more relaxed when they're at the halfway line. I think when they did drop Hibs, the mother will put them under pressure. They looked a little bit shaky with the cross balls, especially at the back post. Um, Hibs were a little bit, when Cadden went off 15 minutes, maybe 10 minutes before, Josh Campbell's went to right back, maybe that's dis disrupted Hibs a little bit towards the end. 
Henderson's come in and he hasn't played much football. He's been injured again as well. So it's an opportunity for him to get on the ball. He is a technically good football player, maybe not the strongest one aspect of his game. He's got to get better on when body contact is made, but he is a good football player. So I'd like to see him getting on the ball. And of course, I talk about it all the time, work rate. Um, your strikers and your forward players aren't just there to score goals and create goals, they're there to be your first defenders when no position have the ball. And so Hibbs front three have got to make sure they're working there, the mother will back four, and making sure they don't get time to play quality passes. Richard, I think the big thing Lee Johnson will send his players, and it won't be negative, it'll be manage the game. Don't take any risks, don't give the opposition any kind of hint of getting back into the game. Basically, get a clean sheet in the second half, you win the game. It's as simple as that. And sometimes halves like that or games like this can turn your season and can just convince the players that what they're doing, they're moving in the right direction. A win today for them would be a huge response uh, from the negativity of Monday. Since, I, can I, if I yeah, can touch yep. so something, Steve, he's talking about getting that clean sheet. Sometimes that mindset can go one or two ways the mindset is set back and try and protect the 1-0 and go with 1-0 and that kind of a, a double negative effect or the other effect is let's go and get a second goal let's push up the pitch so it's how you interpret that message for your manager play safe be careful get a clean sheet sometimes players mindset is oh just sit back stay safe and then you win possession in the middle of the pitch and all of a sudden your white players aren't getting into forward positions to receive passes and then all of a sudden you're penned in so Hibs can't do that they've got to go for a second goal in my opinion the lead 1-0 Dundee United Rangers to come highlights tonight sports scene 7.15 in the BBC Scotland channel and of course live commentary to come from here at Tannadice um, in the next um, hour and a half or so but let's just stick with the guys there at Fur Park 45 minutes to go in this intriguing encounter Paul Mitchell thanks Richard Underway at the start of the second half, Motherwell left to right, Hibs all in black this afternoon, half the goal, David Marsh now stands in front of the goal, behind him is the Hibs fans there, Hibs perfect seven wins out of seven when they keep a clean sheet this season, is that going to be the focus, Motherwell on the ball right now, through McGinn, McGinn plays it inside onto Goss, Goss opens it up, wide on that far side, looking for Penny Penny though, will leave it for substitute McKinstry, sends it round the corner Josh Campbell is there and Campbell plays a long ball up towards the halfway line Nisbet with a push on Ricky Lamy, he did try to hide it but it was as clear as day yeah, the, the line is 20 yards away from him so no chance of getting away with that well, it's just interesting now, Stuart, Stuart McKinstry who's Motherwell's, well should be Motherwell's main attacking threat, a winger, is going to play on the side of Josh Campbell. Now we'll see what Josh Campbell can be like as a 1v1 defender. Yes, good in the ball, good uh, positionally, but how can you defend 1v1? Motherwell well, take the free kick, comes out wide onto Spittle, Spittle into the air, he'll take a bounce, bounces high at the edge of the six yard box into the arms of David Marshall. Marshall gathers, gives a little look, he's not in any particular hurry. David Marshall is Cadden, Bushiri, Porteous, and Stevenson was the start, but of course Cadden has gone off. It's now Josh Campbell there. So that's the change that Hibs have been forced into. Carl McGuinness, Joe Newell, Ewan Henderson, who's on the ball. The midfield three beginning this with Ewan up front. So the goalkeeper's kicked out 60 yards up to Johan. He's got to, he's got to get the flight of the ball, and he's got to take that in his chest, I think. He's heading it down to nobody. He's got to get better at that. Here's McKinstry against Campbell. McKinstry plays it into the box first time. Fizzed right across, too heavy. Comes out the other side, no takers, but already a glimpse of the pace that he possesses. Hibbs will have a throw, Lewis Stevenson will come across to take it. No particular hurry, Lewis Stevenson. As many make their way back into the main stand here. Uh, Motherwell, another good crowd. Crowds have been good all throughout the season. Right across the Scottish Premiership, showing signs of strength in the league as Goss flicks the ball forward. Ken Van Bain is inside the area. Potentially was offside, but he played play to continue. Uh, the assistant on the near side, happy as McGeady has the ball inside the area. Turns Spittle, looks to play the ball away, thumps it out of play. It's a throw in to Motherwell. Yeah, he's many things here in McGeady, but I don't think he'll ever be a left back. I mean, he's done well initially, that little trickery. I think Lewis Stevenson was thinking, please don't give me the ball. Ball played into the middle by McGinn up at the edge of the area. Hips get the header away. Picked up well by Slattery. Slattery plays it back to Penny. Penny gets the ball on the left side. Plays it back round the corner. Sliding in there comes Josh Campbell to get in ahead of Callum Slattery. Throw in. Will come from Motherwell. Ten yards to the corner flag. On that far side as we watch. Little track back. 
the Yuan does well to get in and win the tackle, then McKinstry gets in, thought he played it off the Hibs man, uh, the referee's surrounded, but it's going to be a goal kick. Get really good work from Johan, exactly what you want from your wide players, get back, help your fullback, win possession, really important. So David Marshall. There's the ball, you can see it, I mean, it's not time-wasting as such, Stephen, but you can see Hibs are in no hurry whatsoever just to keep the pace of the game down. You know, well, particularly Mother will have come out of the traps in the second half. They've been a little bit more aggressive. They certainly started this half better than they did the first half, so that's the message. And they've won the ball. Cornelius tries to send it in. Great slide by Porteous for the block. Breaks up to Ewan Henderson on the halfway line. Henderson away from two, trying to accelerate down this left-hand side. Good tracking back from Paul McGinn. The ball is out of play. It's a throw-in. Will go the way of Hibernian. Henderson complains, not really sure what for. Well, I'll tell you what for. The ball goes out of play. He he rolls over, and Sean Goss kicks the ball into him when there was absolutely no need for it whatsoever. And I think that's the, the message that uh, Ewan Henderson was relaying to the referee. Good spot. Well, players do that kind of thing from time to time. Stevenson into Henderson. Henderson, a little flick over the shoulder, and it's a bit trying to hold up. He's got three Motherwell players around him, yet he still emerges with the ball inside the area and flicks it back onto Nisbet. Centre goal, turns, spins, shoots. High and over the top it goes. Not a particularly great shot, but Muller will be concerned, John Collins, how easily the Nisbet spun away. That was really good play from Nisbet. He's, he's, he's won it, he's had two or three players run about. He's, he's, he's broke kindly for him. He's played it for Johan, went for the one-two, and his final shot, unfortunately, was poor, but good play from him. I think you'll have to anticipate there may be little low moments for Kevin Nisbet after that long-term injury. You come back the first few games, you're buzzing, the adrenaline gets you through it, then the legs start to get heavy, you know, you're really searching for your fitness and sharpness over a longer period of time. So, yes, he's going to be quiet, but little moments like that just remind you how good he can be. Porteous with a header back inside the Motherwell half, turned away by Ricky Lamy, out wide onto Blair Spittle. Spittle has it out wide on this near side, pulls the ball back though to... Sandra Johansson inside it comes onto Ricky Lamy. Lamy sends it wide on that far side. Campbell will read it ahead of Penny. And Ellie Johan will have a little look. He's going to try and run Slattery. He's done so. He's on the outside of him. Ricky Lamy comes across. Johan looks up, delivers a half decent ball into the box. McGinn takes a touch and then gets away well from Aidan McGeady. Just fooled him and no more. Forward onto Cornelius. Henderson battles for it. Back inside it comes. Given away though by Smittle. Henderson picks up, plays it through to McGeady. Pulled the trigger a little bit too early on the pass. Ball behind. It was the right pass, just the wrong execution. He played it just too hard, but the pass was on. And he's got to be doing better, in all honesty. Henderson has got is a quality passer. He'll be disappointed with the weight of his pass. 1 0 Debs, no change to their half time scoreline. 16 minutes have gone. McGeady touch and turn, lovely touch into Nisbet. Nisbet beyond Kelly. Not the scoring so far, and a match that means so much. Debs will overtake St Johnson, and they would put seven points between themselves and Motherwell. Looking to do the double over Motherwell this season, having won 1 0 at Easter Road. Ball forward by Motherwell, repelled again by Hibbs. Henderson, centre circle, loses out to Goss. Goss picks up, tries to get it on the inside. Campbell's done really well, anticipating and gets the ball back again. McGinnis helped to the floor, shall we say, by McKinstry. That is a free kick. And Hibbs again, happy, just stops the game. Uh, young Newton Henderson getting the ball, he's back to go. A player up his back, he's got to do better, hold it up. Long ball into the box, it comes Eli Johan across, Nisbet, goal! So, so simple, the long free kick from Porteous, picked out Johan right across the edge of the six-yard box. Kevin Nisbet simply couldn't miss. Mullerwell nail hips too. When you've got a player like Johan with his, his explosive pace, that pass is on, that diagonal in behind the fullback. He's used his pace well, and for once in the game, his final pass is perfect. Again, Nisbet's made the good run, he's timed it in. Nice, simple, two yards out, 2-0. Hibbs in the driving seat. Well, he had the cross just a moment ago, which was also a good one, but nobody could get in the box. But I have to say, dreadful defending by Matt Penny. It's a set play, everybody stops, he switches off. One long ball from Ram Port, he's right, a straight ball over his head, cuts Motherwell open. You can't defend like that from Matt Penny. Yes, he's good in possession, he's good going forward, but as a left back, you cannot afford to defend like that, or your team are going to be punished. That's exactly what's happened. Kevin Nisbet, the predator, certainly finding his form. Well, he was in, he was in quick. One of these ones, Liam Kelly simply could do nothing about it. And Hibbs have got that coveted second goal. And now McGeady has it on the halfway line. Motherwell going to have to come out with a bit more abandon. Now Porteous that just runs that out of play. Stevie Hamill just shouts at his men just to keep things going. 
That's a real gut punch, though, John Collins, for Muller. Well, from Muller's point of view, it's a, a terrible time to lose a, lose a second goal, but from Hibbs' point of view, it's, it's perfect time, and this should give Hibbs energy and, obviously, confidence again. But you can't take your foot off the gas. Yeah. We've seen some remarkable games between these two sides in recent times. What will happen here? Hibbs leading by two goals to now. Motherwell led 2-0 against Kilmarnock and surrendered that game. Can they find a way to come from two down against Hibbs? Here comes McKinstry running at the edge of the area. Steps inside three, opens up, clips it on the angle. It was left by Porteous and Marshall had to dive down. Porteous offers a hand of apology. It looked like one. The centre half with Henry withdrew his head. Well, it surprised me. I thought he was going to head it. And nine out of ten centre halves would have headed it. But thankfully, he's got a goalkeeper behind him who's nice and sharp and on his toes. That's a little bit I'm talking about. Don't take risks. You know, if the ball's out to be met by the air or, or you, go and do it. Don't take any unnecessary risks and tram play smart. David Marshall had the move, that's for sure. Got down really well. I think it's interesting when you know you're being watched in Udinese, you know, watching him, that's not really what you want to do, is withdraw your head. But I don't think you can. I don't think that can go through your mind when you're playing a game that oh, I'm being watched by people. I might try. You know, that's his instinct. That's how he plays ball. Unfortunately, again caught late by Henderson. Um, look to sore one. He's going to get himself back up. Henderson will get a little word. And Goss. Well, Goss turns around and complains to the referee, but the referee was speaking to Henderson. See it, but in this instance, the referee knows Mullow are two 0 down. They want to get things. Co- done quickly, just let, it's a, it's a little soft foul, just move on quickly get the game playing Long from right to left, on to McKinstry McKinstry on that far side, attacking the edge of the area, tries to play the ball in, away by Joe Newell, comes outside the box, on to Matt Penny again Penny is there, tries to slide it down past his man, down on to McKinstry, McKinstry going for the byline good block by Campbell yeah, hooks it away Goss goes after it, tries to head it forward now McGuinness in, snapping away Kevin Nisbet too, tell you what Mullerwell did really well to get that one away, and now it's clipped on Nisbet's left a little bit on Sunday Johansson, the referee's not spotted it it has gone out of play, the centre half is down, he's kicking his leg to the ground, the referee turns round and has a look. I think he was a little bit late, I don't know if it was bad enough for the centre half to go down well, he's up, he's holding his head the referee's having a look, he's now crouched over the Hibs manager is out having a little word and somebody Hansen is back up on his feet. He certainly was a little bit late, but... Yeah, nothing too serious. To it was his face, wasn't it? He was holding his head, so I don't know if he caught him with a, with a flailing arm. Well, everything is checked by VAR, so we really check to see if there was anything, but nothing has occurred and the ball runs out of play. The throw from Motherwell need to do better. That just hands the momentum back to Hibs. Well, that energy they had in the opening seven or eight minutes of the second half has now been sucked out of them, hasn't it? You know, the goal really has knocked them because you know as a player when you're playing in a team and you're thinking, we're not creating them, you know, there's no real spark, we don't look as if we're going to score. And when that filters through the team, then you're in trouble. Hibs trying to play it out of defence, but McGuinness has been caught by Slattery. Slattery off to McKinstry. McKinstry almost into the area. McGuinness recovered at the very edge of the box. Now, there's going to be a yellow card for Callum Slattery. He ran at the referee. He threw his right arm out, not at the referee, but in frustration to emphasise a point. And short of writing your own name in the book, not sure what else he could have done there. was very unhappy, but the reaction means a yellow card. And the ball comes all the way through onto David Marshall. And I guess, Stephen, that's just a symptom of what's happening this afternoon. Well, it's frustration, and I think he's every right to ask for a free kick because I think the referee let play go. Uh, go. Stuart McKinstry had the ball, but he was up against three Hibs defenders, so there was absolutely no advantage. Motherwell probably would rather have had the free kick on the edge of the box. However, you can't go throwing your arms about. So the ball into the middle. Hibbs leading by two goals to nil. Kevin Nisbet with both goals as Motherwell try and pick up the ball. Spittle trying to play it through to Kevin Van Veen. They'll come all the way back for Hibbs and they'll pick it up again. On this left-hand side, Stevenson on to McGeady. McGeady inside his own half, takes the touch, lays it back inside on to Joe Newell. That's just majestic technical ability in tight situations for McGeady. He's just another level from everybody else. It's a joy to watch, for me anyway. Here's Jan. Jan plays up to the edge of the area. Henderson is there. Henderson spun away from his man. Good tackle coming in for Sondra Johansson. 
touches off Henderson and goes behind. Motherwell again threatened at the back. Liam Kelly's desperately trying to get things working and moving. Nobody's turning to face him. Takes the ball inside. And we'll think about playing it short. Sondre Soldan Johansson, a Norwegian. This is a couple of games this season. Launches it long. McKinstry might be in behind Campbell. He is. Chance. This is needed and it's in. The mistake came from Josh Campbell. Tried to cut the ball out of the edge of his own area. McKinstry in behind him. Simply slid the ball past the goalkeeper. Motherwell back in the game. Motherwell one hits two. Well, we have a lifeline. I was critical of Matt Penny earlier on when Ramportius put a long straight ball over his head. We did wonder how Josh Campbell would adapt to playing in an unnatural full-back position. There's your answer. He gets himself caught onto the ball. He's trying to squeeze up the pitch when he doesn't need to. Mark your player. From a game where he was really comfortable, confident, in control, suddenly now the game has turned in its head. Wonderful finish by McKinstry. Game on. All credit to McKinstry. I think since he's done on, he's, he's done really well. He's want, he's want to get out full-backs, really positive. He's put balls in the box. Excellent start from the young man, but Josh Campbell's way. He doesn't need to go to ground, he's got good pace. Stay on your feet and run back. It's too easy just to go to ground. There's a couple of times he's went to ground since he's went to pull back when he hasn't needed to. Yeah, I think that's the problem. He's just not used to that. There is uh, a hold up for a moment or two. Referee just chatting with Kevin Van Vyn. Didn't appear to be anything wrong with the goal as far as we could tell from here. Uh, the referee just saying to players hold on a second. And he glances round behind him. But just they were checked for offside to see if there's any any issues coming with that. Everything is reviewed. I thought Stevenson was playing him on. But there is nothing more disheartening than to lose a goal to a VAR check. And Motherwell aren't going to be disheartened. They have the goal. Motherwell won. Hibs two. Game on now. I think Richard said it, there's been plenty of goals in this fixture over the years, Paul. And I'm not even just talking about the 5th of May 2010, 6-6. Six, six. There's been four threes and four twos and four ones and six ones. So there's certainly more in this game yet. Yeah, it's rarely dull when these two get together. Hibs have now scored 200 league goals on this ground. They started the day on 198, the double from Kevin Nisbet. And Motherwell through McKinstry have thrown themselves a valuable lifeline and you can sense the change in atmosphere right round Fir Park. The Motherwell fans energised once more. Hibbs try and pick up through Porteous. Porteous plays it back onto Stevenson. Stevenson back onto Marshall. Marshall's first touch a tad heavy. Him Van Veen tried to close him down. The ball comes out onto the near side. Henderson couldn't keep it in. Ball is out of play. It came off McGinn, according to the assistant down below us. That's Callum Spence. And it's the throw. Change the whole tone of the game's changed. Well, all of a sudden you hear the hear the stands, there's positivity, there's cheers, there's roars, there's head of the moans. That transfers on the mother of players and gives them energy. All of a sudden, everybody wants the ball. There's a little bit of spark about everybody. Hibs have now have doubts in their mind. It also means the mother of players are taking a step forward as opposed to stepping back off the game when you're feeling good and you think now we've got built something up, we've got the goal we needed, push after the game. The roar you heard in the background was for Ian Henderson getting a free kick, he went down, the home fans didn't agree with it, but it's going to be a free kick when we inside the Motherwell half. I'll run you through that Motherwell team, so much has been happening, Kelly a go, again Johansson, Lamy and Penny, uh, the players there, Slattery, Goss, Cornelius in the midfield, Stuart McKinstry, the goal scorer on at half-time, Kim Van Veen and Blair Spittle. Aidan McGeady from one side, Joe Newell from the other. McGeady would be the in-swinger, Newell would be the out-swinger. Newell touches it to McGeady, they've gone with a different move altogether. McGeady attacking the edge of the area. Left foot in, it's a brilliant ball, there's a penalty check. Kushiri went down and Ricky Lamy took him down and the referee immediately holds things. The ball's gone behind. Stephen Craig, in your thoughts? Well, first of all, uh, Ricky Lamy's wrong side of Kushiri. And if Bashiri has tried to initiate a contact and throw himself down, it's not a penalty. Yep. If Ricky Lamy has been clumsy and clamouring over the top of him, absolutely it will be a penalty. Again, it came from McGeady, short free kick, excellent delivery into the box. Well, must have been a stumble because nothing has been called, so the ball is out of play on that far side. Bashiri again just breaking through, just little moments, little moments of this game. Motherwell 1, Hibs 2, stay with us for all the action on BBC Radio Scotland. 18 minutes gone, and once this one 
is done and dusty. Tasty one from Tannadice, Dundee United against Rangers. Goss intercepted in the midfield, picked up by Joe Newell. She played out wide on Jaden McGeady. McGeady up at the edge of the area. McGeady being shown the outside, wants to come back on the inside. Still there, twisting, turning. You get the call from McGuinness. McGuinness gets it sent to the field, plays it back out wide onto Stevenson. Stevenson into the middle. Oh, chance for Kevin Nisbet. Didn't get the connection he wanted over the heads of the central defenders, and Nisbet heads it wide. It was a superb ball from little Louis Stevenson, and I think Nisbet, and to be fair to him, he's seen it very late. It looked like the defender was going to head it. The defender missed, missed time, his, his, his head movement, and it just came in last minute. So initially it looked like a big a setter, but it was unlucky. I think he's almost gave up on it, yeah. thinking surely one of these setter halves is going to head that, and then they don't, and then it's reacted from him. On ball forward, Kevin Van Bain plays it out wide. On to Stuart McKinstry, McKinstry gathers. Ball full back, on to Slattery, Slattery, lovely ball out wide, on to Paul McGinn. On the right-hand side, McGinn into the middle, hooked away brilliantly by Porteous. Lovely little touch to get it outside the area, and Mother will have to go all the way back. On to the goalkeeper, real energy about the game right now. Picked up well by Lamy. Lamy gathers long on the angle. Lou Stevenson turns, is facing his own goal, turn to head the ball towards Joe Newell. Back onto Stevenson, outside his area, clips it high up towards the halfway line. This bit a little bit passive, and he was beaten there by the other number 15 on the field, Sunday Hansen, and the ball comes down perhaps as Johansson played it forward. Lamy watches as Goss gets the header. He was shouting to try and get the ball moved forward. McGuinness second to the ball, and Motherwell have it on the halfway line with a chance to get things moving. Ball played back inside, and now the opportunity to get things going once again. McKinstry attacking the edge of the area, cuts back inside, tried the shot, blocked well that time. Campbell in there, the ball bounces up to the halfway line, and it's picked up again by Motherwell. Goss has it, Goss. Lays the ball back onto Slattery. Slattery down the side, passes it straight. Kelly Johan, Ellie Johan passes it straight back onto Slattery. 30 yards from goal, thinks about the shot. Thought about it. the execution, not great. High and over the top. Motherwell one, Hibs two. It's sloppy from Hibs there. Johan's won it. I don't know if it was Johan's fault, but I, for me, Henderson didn't want the ball. Johan's played it to me, he's turned away as if to say, I don't want the ball. You've got to always want the ball. The Hibs just have to ride out these moments, don't they? You know, I said at half time about managing the game. They're in a situation now, it's manage the next five or ten minutes. Don't give anything away. Maybe allow the manager to make substitutions, try and bring fresh energy, fresh dynamic into the team. But Mother will certainly are pushing. Long from Marshall, one by McGinn, headed over the halfway line. Tracking back was Aidan McGeady. McGeady plays it off. Blair Spittle throwing will come for Hibs. Hibs just asking to calm things down that little bit. Lee Johnson out there. Conway to the coat, turned up, gets his way back to the technical area, Lewis Stevenson looking to get the throw in, but again, just another few ticks off the clock, and Stevenson basically saying there's nobody moving, and he's forced to throw the ball into Henderson, gets it right back, and then passes it out of play. Poor, poor from Hibbs, not enough movement at the thrower, players have got to get away from the standing, too close to the thrower, makes it more difficult, it happens so often when I'm watching Scottish football, players five, ten yards away from the thrower. Get away from them. Create space. Have they lost their nerve a little bit, John, the last four or five minutes? You yep. know, a few misplaced passes out of play, giving the ball away easily. Yeah, there's a there's a nervousness and a little bit of anxiety creeping in. The Go. exact opposite of a muddle. They're yeah. playing with freedom now. Goss with a long ball forward. Watch Kevin Van Veen. Block comes back to Goss again. Plays it out wide onto McKinstry. Header back. Outside the area comes on to Penny. Now McKinstry outside the area. Gets the cross into middle. Bushido the header away. Big start to Paul McGinn. He'd love a little crack at goal, but he was blocked by former teammate Lewis Stevenson. And now it's picked up again. Spit a lot to Slattery. Slattery on the angle. McKinstry. McKinstry gets away from Johan, but his header back across the middle was knocked away by Porteous. He's yelling at his teammates to get themselves out. He might not put it so politely. Motherwell one. Hibbs two. Lamy inside, centre circle. Chance for Slattery. Slattery pushes it short onto Dean Cornelius. Cornelius back onto Slattery, coming down the right hand side. Out wide, outside of the box. A little ball in by McGinn. Chance for Spittle to send it across. It's Porteous who comes in and makes the blocky again. Berates his fellow defenders. Corner kick to Motherwell. Terrific little run from Spittle. We diagonal run. Darton in, gets in a good position. Thankfully, head stopped the cross getting in. Corner kick to come. Headline team news from Rangers and Ibrox. Chulak will start instead of Morelos. 
And the change made by Michael Beale sets the headline from Town at Ice as the corner comes in. Oh, a head flick up and over the top from Sonny Johansson, but took a deflection. It's going to be another corner off to come from the right to the left to take this one. Motherwell pushing, searching for an equaliser. Yeah, they certainly are. And, you know, I was saying about it, Stevie Hamill having to make changes and mix things up. The onus may now be on Lee Johnson. Mother will have grabbed the game by the scruff of the neck. The, uh, uh, the goal they've got has completely rejuvenated them, and Hibbs now need to find something else. Hibbs midfield three have to try and get control of the ball. So the corner kick to come from the left hand side. They do need a ball, and one has been been brought on. Uh, it's going to be knocked across by Paul McGinn. One of the essentials for the game. Blair Spittle gets a little bit of abuse from the Hibbs fans. He turns and sends them a cheery greeting and gets ready to play the corner in. Corner swung in by Spittle. Up and over the crossbar, just glanced the top of the bar. Referee points and says it's a goal kick. Porteous is down. Motherwell come close again, but Hibs survive. It's a superb delivery. Whipped in at a good height, a good pace. Difficult for defenders. In, in fairness, the Motherwell attacking players really moving quick in the box. Difficult to pick up. Hit the bar once again. I just think because there's so many players in and around David Marshall, he can't even come for it because it's so congested. But you're right, it was a lovely delivery right on the money. Unfortunately, I think it was Ricky Lamy again that made the contact. Hibs are riding their luck, Mother will push him. However, they need to find that little bit of magic to get the equaliser. There were so many players around the ball. I just wrote down Ricky Lamy. I thought that's what it was. He bowled over both the Hibs central defenders, Porteous and Bushiri, are now back on their feet. What a game. What a last 20 minutes we have for you, plus additional time. Stay with us here on BBC Radio Scotland. Hibs led by 2-0. Two, two goals from Kevin Nisbet, Stuart McKinstry. His third goal and scored against Rangers, and Aberdeen has now scored against Hibs. And that's why it's 2-1. Oh. Ball out wide. McGinn seemed to challenge onto the back of McGeady. Didn't get a free kick, so McGinn still has the ball. Plays it on the inside. Slattery wanted too long, though. And McGinnis will chip it up and over the top. Lamy gets the header, though. Plays it back through on to Liam Kelly. Chasing in there was Kevin Nisbet looking for a hat-trick. He's got a hat-trick in the first game of the season. Tristan Doidge haven't scored one in the league this season. It's James Scott, the former Motherwell player. Last Hibs player to score a hat-trick in the league back in May. St Johnston were the victims on that occasion. The ball played back by McGinnis. His Motherwell got caught in possession. Through on to David Marshall. Marshall sends it long to the right hand side. Billy Yuan is up, heads the ball into the centre circle, straight to Cornelius. Cornelius takes it out, slattery beautifully away from McGinnis. Now going in, Billy Yuan challenging from the back. That's a free kick. Potential yellow card as well for the challenge if you think it was cynical. But David Monroe has kept his cards to himself. Although he not for long as the ball is kicked away by I, I George I've, got to give credit, I've got to give credit to the referee. I think he's, he's, he's been very good. He hasn't been throwing the yellow cards out because there hasn't been a bad tackle the whole game. Yeah, it was just Callum Slattery with a silly shout at the referee. Yeah, well, that's the right. only one in the book. I think the reason why Joe Newell kicked the ball away, Paul, they were bringing the initial ball back on. The one that they'd lost in the stand. That, that one looked like a as if it was lacking a little bit of air, but certainly that was the reason why Joe Newell kicked the ball away. But I certainly thought if it was going to be a booking for Hibbs, you know, Johan getting the wrong side of Callum Slattery and pulling him down, you think that's just a standard yellow card, but fair play to the ref. Now, if we're deciding there wasn't a problem, Sean Goss over the ball, Hibbs everybody back, and then around the area, Goss lifts it in, and it's taken a bounce and goes behind, there was a push as well, and Fortius and Bushiri exchange a high five, David Marshall has a drink to try and waste a little bit more time, nearly 72 minutes gone. For me, this is when Hibs players have to be brave. When I say brave, I don't put your body in the line and blocks and tackles. Braves is making yourself available for a pass, giving the man in possession three, four options. This is the time in the game when you see players that don't really want it sometimes. When the pressure's on, they start marking the opponent instead of getting away from opponents. That's going to come long, but the offside flag is up. And the ball is out of play. So just a little bit stop-start. Going to be a couple of changes, though. Brian McLaughlin, pitch side. Yeah, there's going to be a couple. Paul Hanlon and uh, the other player coming on, Marion Cabraya, are going to be coming on. The player's being replaced. Kelm again, he took a bang on his left leg a short time ago, and he was just really struggling, I think, a little bit with it. So he'll be coming off as will Eli Yuan. So it's Cabraya and Hanlon on for... a. Uh, Yuan and McGuinness. So a lot of changes and a lot of positional changes here. Lewis Stevens went to right back. 
Perez went to left back, Hanlon's went to left centre half, and Porches went into central midfield. So a lot of changes. Wholesale changes as the ball comes back. Not just two people coming on, but all the personnel. Campbell will be a little bit happier in the midfield area. Free kick given against Gorse. Nisbet went down. Looked a little soft, but the free kick is awarded. Not easy to suddenly, I mean, it's a brand new back four. Well, it is. I mean, it's fine if it works and you get through the game and you don't concede, but clearly Lee Johnson thought he needs a little bit more solidity in defence. Lewis Stevenson will probably be a better right yeah. full-back, even though he's left-footed than Josh Campbell, because it's more natural to him to fight uh, uh, to defend in wide areas. So it's certainly worth the risk, we'll see. Campbell's getting asked to get back to his natural position, get up in support, get closer to Nisbet. He's been a little bit isolated the last 15 minutes up there. Evs play the ball on the angle, McGeady can't get there, Porteous though steps up, wins the ball, he then comes into Goss, Porteous goes down, play on, says the referee, low ball and Kevin Nisbet! That's a brilliant finish, running across the penalty box, clipped it in with his right foot, top corner, it's a hat-trick for Kevin Nisbet, and could it be all three points for Hibs? Lee, Hollywell one, Hibs three. Lee Johnson will be absolutely delighted. First thing, he's put Porteous in the middle of the pitch, what does he do? It breaks, he wins the 50-50 right in there, Plays the pass to Josh Campbell out on the right. Nesbitt does, makes a great time run. He comes from behind the centre half. It's cut back perfectly from on his right foot. He's wrapped his foot around it. Keeper no chance from his point of view. Goal against the running play, but a vitally important goal. Well, I can tell you Lee Johnson was delighted because he was about 15 yards onto the pitch when Kevin Nesbitt put it into the back of the net. I think he may have been patting himself in the back. I wasn't too sure. <laughs> but you have to say, Kevin Nesbitt, the longer the game has went on, you talk about an instinctive striker coming back from injury. The goals clearly help him. They just switch the mind back on again. I think it was Sandra Johansson get caught ball watching. Once your shoulders are square as a centre half and you can't see the centre forward, you're in trouble. He appeared on his blind side. Wonderful ball in, but incredible finish Kevin this but wonderful hat trick so he's got the three goals that could mean three points going to Easter Road and it's a funny old familiar feeling for Motherwell worst team in the league in terms of home form rooted to the bottom of that particular table it's their away form that's saving them so far four of their five wins this season have been away from home the solitary win at home in the league has come against Livingston. Kimran Vane was the goal scorer then. That was August, long time ago. And now at the moment, you can sense that Hibs have got the ability to go on and win this one as the long ball gets played through. Liam Kelly will come and gather. Is there fight, though, Stephen Craig, and left in this Motherwell side? Well, there has to be. You know, I, I can't really answer that question. The players on the pitch with 15 minutes to go, plus out of time, will have to answer that question. But clearly, you know, they had the momentum, they were feeling good, they were in the ascendancy. The goal has just completely punctured the players. Supporters have got up and left, and it's exactly where Hibs want the game to be. On ball played through, runs behind. This John Collins, as it stands, as a result, will mean a great deal for Hibs and just allow them to even start looking at the January transfer window with a bit more confidence. I think it's a booster, and away win, three goals, there's lots of positives. <laughs> Football changes so quickly, we're just talking five minutes about Mother will control in the second half, Hibs looking like they're going to concede a goal, and if they conceded a second, panic would have been set in, it would have been carnage. All of a sudden, made, managers made three or four changes, positional changes, and bang, a goal from nothing, really. Motherwell are going to make a change, we'll get down pitch side in just a moment, it's Penny, plays the ball forward, it's gone out of play, Brian McLaughlin pitch side. Yeah, Callum Slattery was yellow carded a few moments ago, he's going to be coming off, in fact it's going to be a double change uh, one of the players coming on is going to be Max Johnson, number 26 Ross Tierney also coming on not quite sure who will be the second player coming off, but certainly two players coming on will be 22 and 26, Max Johnson and Ross Tierney. Thanks Brian Hibs have come forward, they want to throw on that far side well, it's been adventurous and plenty of goals in Hibs games of recent times. They beat Livingston 4-0, they got thumped by Celtic, lost to Hearts, but this time they're on the right side of the scoreline, leading as they do by 3-1. They've won a corner on the far side, Aidan McGeady shapes to take it. Motherwell aren't going to make the change on the corner. Is getting ready to come in. Well, Hibs unbeaten in the last five visits to Fir Park, that's going to clip up to six. One of his last home win here, August 2019, Seedorf, Donnelly and Hilton, the goal scorers. It seems like a long time ago. Now Joe Newell is going to take the corner. Newell on that far side. Both hands above his head. Pops them down. Spins the ball in. 
little header comes back across by Motherwell. It was Goss, and then just launched long, taken down. Cabrera brings it down, first meaningful touch for him, and plays the ball back inside, and waiting for it. And Stevenson, Stevenson forward onto Porteous, Porteous. Back onto Stevenson on the halfway line. Hibbs quite prepared to play the passes back. They're in no great hurry now, leading as they do by 3-1. to one. Try and come in down the line. McGeady kept the ball in and switched his way past two players. But again, Malouel, Smormum just do enough to get the ball away. And it comes all the way back onto Liam Kelly. Kelly launches it long over the halfway line. Porteous left it. Bashiri was in behind him. Porteous. Then I thought we're taken out of the play. Play on, says the referee. Kevin Van Veen comes on, sliding the ball out wide. On to McGinn. McGinn watches. Porteous remains down. He's got a head knock. Referee has not stopped the play yet. Here comes Cornelius. Cornelius on the inside. Works the little one-two. Cornelius gets the ball into the middle. Kevin Van Veen clips it up. Gets the little header away, turns, Hibbs kick the ball clear. Sandra Johansson has the ball, it's now stopped. The Hibbs bench are up in arms, they're yelling at the fourth official. Stevie Hamill's reacted angrily. Brian McLaughlin is pitch side, you might see that a bit better than me. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, bad down there, thank you. Apologies if you caught a little bit of the language, but it did seem to be a long time for the stoppage. Well, you either stop the game initially or you keep it going. And, you know, it clearly should have been stopped. But because he didn't stop it within the first three or four seconds, they allow it then to go for another 25, then blow it. It, it. The referee's put himself under all sorts of pressures. Protocol, head not stop the game. Well, as you could tell, the benches weren't overly happy. And Ryan Porteous... Now Motherwell have got a player down and Kevin Van Veen. The Hibs bench are waving to the Motherwell bench to get their physios on the field to play. One thing's for sure, never dull in the world of Scottish football. Okay, maybe he's getting a little bit carried away. For me, uh, Ryan Porter has got to be a bit tougher. He's only really six foot two and strong as an ox. The amount of times he goes down as if he's been shot, and all of a sudden he pops up 30 seconds later. I don't like to see that from any player, but certainly not from a big, strong central defender. Well, interesting that the substitutions now are being halted while they check on the status of Kim Van Veen. So Kim Van Veen is down. The physios are around him, and again, it just stops the game. And if anything, Stephen Craig, and it's to Hibbs advantage, just draws the whole, you know, atmosphere of the game out once more. Yeah, I think initially, that, you know, with Kevin Van Veen, I think it must be a breathing issue. It was actually Cabrera who was shouting to the motherhole bench to come on as Kevin Van Veen had just lay down with no one absolutely near him. So the physios are at him now, but you're right, this is what Hibbs want. You know, they want to kill the game as much as they possibly can, take all the momentum out of the play, stop, start for the next 10 minutes, and Hibbs will know it's job done. Thanks for Kevin Van Veen. Still slightly doubled over, he is sitting up. One or two players coming for the energy drinks at the moment. There's the Motherwell physios just checking round their man, the helping hand up. Doubled over slightly, slowly catching his breath, coughing a couple of times. He'll be helped off the field of play. Motherwell again just checking to see whether they want to make things changing. And again, it's hard work for the fourth official down there, Craig Napier. He was getting it from all sides. It's the worst job, the fourth official. You can't do anything about it, really. And yet, stressed out managers and coaches bawling in your ear. <laughs> 90 minutes. <laughs> no thanks. Here's the changes. Brian McLaughlin. Yeah, Paul McGinn's day is over. He's going to be coming off with uh, Max Johnson coming on and also being replaced. I told you about it earlier on. Callum Slattery with Ross Tierney. They were just having a look as well at Kevin Van Veen, see if he'll be able to continue. Um, there's another substitute who's standing beside me. I think they're just waiting to see if Ken Van Veen will indeed continue. It looks like it may well be young Lennon Miller if Kevin Van Veen can't continue. He's just gone and taken his seat back inside the dugout once again. But, yeah, it's mayhem down here, Paul. <laughs> Sounded carnage down there, Brian. Thank you for that. The referee is standing, ready for the bounce ball. I don't think Muller will in any mood to give it back to Hibbs. Sean Goss is standing there. Goss takes a touch. Keeps the ball, plays it out wide on that far side. Motherwell one, Hibs three. All the action as ever. Sports Sound, BBC Radio Scotland. Hibs have won the ball. McGeady on to Nisbet, the hat trick hero for Hibs. Gets it back just beyond the halfway line. Lays it back onto Stevenson. Stevenson onto Campbell. Campbell upended by Dean Cornelius. And that's a free kick. Referee has a little look behind him. You see the confidence in the Hibs players there. That little phasey play. Doing that one, a 3 1 up, 1 and 2 touch. Good movement, 
confidence. It's such a big thing, confidence in football. It's been a real roller coaster, hasn't it? You know, mother will nervous at the start, Hibs flying, you know, Hibs in control, mother will back in the game, Hibs look nervy, now they're back in control again, so it's been relentless. Opportunity for Hibs, Newell plays the free kick in, Sunday Hansen wins the header, gets it outside the box, taken down on the chest by Campbell, but it was a poor one. McKinstry will gather, he gets blocked off, and Hibs play the ball all the way back. Hibs currently looking to go to 26 points from 21 games, that's where they'll be heading. Coming into today, it'd been all or nothing away from home. They'd won two, St Johnston, Ross County lost eight, lost six on the spin. But they've found a way to combat that dizziness and they lead by three to one. It's a hard road back for Motherwell with six minutes plus to play. Hibs have the ball outside their area. Back inside it comes on to Marshall. Marshall gets away from Tierney as Tierney tried to close him down. Now flicked on by Penny. Down the middle it comes. Rocky Bushiri sends it long, high into the Motherwell half. Ricky Lamy with a header. Cornelius meets it with a header to send it out wide to Penny. Motherwell making no advances back into the road half. They go, in fact, they've given the ball away on to Kevin this, but three Motherwell players around him. Sonny Johansson took him down, wasn't interested in making a challenge. That is a yellow card. Yeah, good play from this, but nice composure, pulls it down, gets control and draws the foul out the, stri- the centre half. He was never going to run away from the three of them, but it was smart play from him. Stephen, as a former centre half, you've got three players round one, you're well away from the area, yet you take a yellow. It's, it's just impatience, Paul, that's all it is. You know, it's because I, I've been there, you know, he was at fault for the third goal because Kevin Nesbitt scored, so it plays in your mind. Yes, you have to try and get rid of it, but sometimes you can't, and it's just a bit composure, stay up, you know 3v1's in your favour, but because time's against you, the game's going against you, you just want to win the ball back as quick as you possibly can, and, you know, stop a, uh, stopping a promising attack means it's the yellow card. Hebs after the free kick, just to the right of goal. Ryan Fortius fancies his chances, and it goes wide to the post. It remains Motherwell 1, Hibs 3. Here's former Hibs player, that Hibs boss, John Collins. He was a little bit optimistic in my part, 35 to 40 yards out, centre half. He's getting a little bit carried away with himself. Just trying to double that fee for Udinese, <laughs> that's all it was. Ball gets played over the halfway line, Motherwell return it, headed back by Hibs. Spittle again for Motherwell, and Vane is on the field of play, challenging for that and he's won the throw, just coming off Paul Hanlon and then takes his place back in the area time ticking away, it's against Motherwell, trailing by two goals Spittle plays the ball into the area, headed away by Hanlon, breaks back on to Cornelius, Cornelius closed down well that's an excellent play from Joe Newell up to the halfway line it goes Sondra Johansson just cuts inside beats Kevin this but lays it to the centre circle onto Ricky Lamy, Lamy onto Goss and Goss has to play the ball back all the way through it goes and it's picked up again by Kelly, Kelly sends it long the header around the corner from Penny looking for McKinstry, McKinstry didn't get there, Hibbs clear McKinstry does track back and win it wins it well, now to Sean Goss wide left hand side, level with the penalty area by the touchline Goss now gets the ball played back to him he plays it back on to Lamy, Motherwell finding too many black shirts on their way now the long ball on the angle chasing it all the way through with Max Johnson who's back after the spell at Cove Rangers, can't keep it in. Another couple of changes to come. More work for Brian McLaughlin. Yeah, Ed McGeady, his time is over. Just four minutes to go. He's been sensational this afternoon for Hibernian. His game is over. He'll be replaced by number six, Nohan Kenny. And also coming on is Elias Melkerson. And you hear the applause for the Hibernian fans for the hat-trick hero this afternoon, Kevin Nisbet. What a job for Kevin Nisbet. Five games back. Five goals netted, it's been impressive. Lars Merkison comes on, he scored twice in the Scottish Cup quarter-final tie here last season. Well, a man sent off early, early, it was, a, I think, inside two minutes, if memory serves me correct, Bevis Mugabe. And Hibs won the Cup tie on that day, so he is on. Where's 20? One goal this season came in the opening game of the season against Clyde, so he's not really found chances too easy to come by. And Noah Kenny also on the field to play off the bench for the third time this season. He's kind of dropped out of plans a little bit. Motherwell one, Hibs three, still to come on Sports Out, BBC Radio Scotland, Dundee United against Rangers live from Tannadice. Stephen Thompson, Craig Levine, and Lamont will take you through that one. As the ball comes up to the halfway line, and it'll just spin away on that far side. John, this game looks like Hibs know they've won it and Motherwell know they've lost yeah, it. Motherwell look like they've, they've 
they ran out of ideas, the energy is drained from them off. That third goal's really killed them off. Yeah. Such a shame because they did have the momentum from Motherwell's point of view. The manager was so disappointed conceding that goal because they did start the second half really well. Once they got that opening goal, Hibs were rattled. There's no doubt about it, but I would be very surprised if Hibs don't finish the game off. Joe Newell on the ball, pushed off the ball by Cornelius, he's never given up, trying to bring the ball forward, he's running across the field at the moment. Out wide it comes, on to Max Johnson, left-footed cross into the area, taking charge was Lewis Stevenson. Excellent play, header away on that far side. Well, Motherwell have enjoyed majority of the possession, they've had more shots than Hibs. Hibs have got four shots being registered on target, they have three goals, Kevin Nisbet with the hat-trick as Porteous in the midfield heads the ball forward. Motherwell get it inside their own half. There'll be four additional minutes to be played here at Fir Park as the ball comes down the side. 90 seconds of normal time. Melkerson fouled by Ricky Lamy. And Melkerson gets himself back up and hits again. Stephen just take their time. It's going to be some game here at the weekend when Ross County well, from Colin. Yeah, listen, the more games you lose, the bigger the next one becomes. You know, and, and Stevie Hamill knew the two home games back to back, home against Hibbs and home against Ross County, they could make a real dent in the league and have a go at the teams above them. Now it's all about fighting off the team below them. And you know, I, I don't think at any stage this afternoon Mother will have really threatened to win the game. They've been competitive at times, but I think Hibbs have always been the team you thought if there's a goal coming, it's probably gonna come for them. Alkerson tries to link with Joe Newell. Last six points, Motherwell have. Five have come away from home as a yellow card. Joe Newell just going in the tackle up ending. Sondra Johansson, so Joe Newell, first Hibs player into the book. And that comes just as the 90 minutes are coming and going. Motherwell trying to find a way through. Max Johnson a successful loan spell and gets the chance back at his parent club to show what he can do. Pushing for a place in that match against Ross County. Now here come Motherwell. Sandra Johansson from right to left. McKinstry, the goal scorer for Motherwell, picks up, plays the ball into the area. Ryan Porteous, though, stands guard, gathers, and then will push the ball out wide. He sends it straight to Ricky Lamy, into Dean Cornelius. Cornelius gathers, they will play it out wide onto this right hand side. Chance for Johnson to get the ball in the area. Hanman got it away, breaks off. Cabrilla, Cabrilla. He tries to work a little one-two with Henderson, and he'll escape down this right-hand side. Runs into Dean Cornelius. Cornelius is strong in the tackle, wins the ball onto Goss, gets the ball out wide onto Spittle. Spittle into the middle. Van Veen takes a good first touch, tries to lay the ball back. Chance! Goal! Spun in beautifully. Nicely done by Motherwell. The goal comes across Ross Tierney, spun his way through, and Motherwell get a lifeline. Motherwell two hips three. I think it was a good play from Van Veen again. He's taken it in a tight situation and, and popped it to his teammate. Clever, good in, that, in and around that penalty box, isn't he? Uh, Paul have been here before, haven't we? Mother will chase in a game against Tibbs and yep. they're behind, they should have been out of sight. Uh, no, listen, this, this fixture seldom fails to deliver. Can Mother will have one big push? Do they have one last effort in them to really go and get a point when it looked like they were getting nothing? Well, right in stoppage time, 90 seconds plus to go. Hebs take the kick off, it's launched long, and Motherwell trying to find a way to get right back in this one. One win in 11, three in the last 16, but they would love to rescue a point here. Liam Kelly, there's no ball person there, so he has to race to get it himself. Now, how fragile are Hebs? That's the question. How fragile are the visitors? Long ball from Kelly, played through, little head flick on Sondra Johansson. Herrera gets the ball away, it's out wide onto that far side, Penny and Campbell chase for it, Campbell wins the header, going to run out of play on that far side, so Ross Tierney, second goal of the season, has brought things to a boil, John Collins. That was good determination from Campbell there, it's, the ball's popped up in the air, and it's an important little header, defensive one, and he's won it. Motherwell now come forward, Max Johnson into the area he goes, chance to cut the ball back, it's not cleared by Porteous, and it's back in the arms of the goalkeeper, McKinstry had a little nibble, Porteous was sliding in simply to try and intercept, it wasn't a back pass, it goes straight back to David Marshall, and boy, oh boy, were Motherwell fighting there. Hibbs so, so lucky, <laughs> they broke away, great ball, I don't know who played the ball into that left back here, Hibbs left, and a terrific ball into the box. Marshall 
sends it long. How much longer? 20 seconds or so to go. The ball is knocked out of play. On that far side, it's going to be a Hibs throw, which basically should kill the game for the men from Easter Road. It's been a five-goal encounter so far. Hibs being told to hurry up. He's going to do that. That's for sure. Josh Campbell with the throw on the far side. He's wanting movement. Throws the ball in. Lance Melkerson. Melkerson on that far side. Lays the ball back to Campbell. Campbell to Kenna. Kenna tries to battle for it at the edge of the area. Breaks back to Campbell. Merkerson inside the area. Still going. He's holding on. He doesn't need to throw the ball across. Clever play from him. Now lays the ball back on to Josh Campbell. Time is evaporating away here from Motherwell. It's a real battle down by the corner flag to try and retrieve the ball. But it is going to be a throw in to Hibernian. And that should be enough. There's a Hibs man down on the far side, slowly getting back to the feet is Josh Campbell, it's going to be a Hibs throw for Hibs, six straight away defeats look like it will come to an end here now the throw comes in, lovely little touch in, here's Noah Kenna at the edge of the area Campbell went down Motherwell bring the ball away, they might get one last chance but Bushiri will belt the ball out of play, it's picked up, thrown in. Sondra Johansson has gone way in advance of where the ball should be thrown in. The three additional minutes of time have come and gone. It's now Matt Penny who's going to get the throw. Penny throws it backwards. It's all over at Far Park. Real drama at the end. The late goal from Ross Tierney brought things back as Ryan Porteous celebrates in front of the Motherwell fans. He's being told to move away by the referee. The Hibs headlines, though, came from Kevin Nisbet. He's the hat-trick hero. It finishes with a little bit of a sour taste from Motherwell. Ricky Lamy is chasing away at Ryan Porteous. He's being forced away. Now there's players coming round. There's pushing and shoving going on. The Motherwell players are still wanting to have a little go at Ryan Porteous. It's Ricky Lamy. He's being pushed away. Still more Motherwell players have come into the Hibs box as the Hibs fans celebrate. The Hibs players go across. The referee now shakes hands with one or two players. A hectic old ending at Fur Park, but it's Hibs who break their horrible run of away form. Kevin Nisbet with a hat trick. Motherwell two, Hibernian three. On digital.